I am Thor, son of Odin. As long as there is life in my breast, I am running out of things to say. Great, another broken white boy for us to fix. That's my secret, Cat. I'm always in. You took everything from me. I don't even know who you are. With great power comes great responsibility. I can do this all day. Well, good night, forever! Welcome, Internet, to another episode of Views from the 616. It is the blackest MCU podcast in the multiverse, powered by four all nerds, where we discuss everything in the MCU from the perspective of people of color. And I am one of your hosts, Tatiana King, a.k.a. Little Vision Burt, a.k.a. the Wicked Witch of the West View, a.k.a. Agatha Darkness is Freddy. And as usual, I'm joined by my lovely Crimson Shaded co-host. Once again, it's your boy, DJ Ben Amin, a.k.a. Brother Fudu Child, Bofa Bofa, Holla Holla Holla, Black Adam Warlock, The Nightmare on Elm Street, Lieutenant Good Trouble, mm-hmm. Vision Street, Your and before we get too deep into the episode, we got to say happy birthday, DJ Ben Hamid. Happy birthday, DJ. Happy birthday, DJ. Happy birthday. Hey. Happy birthday. All right. So, <laughs> just wanted to make sure we have that birthday celebration for you. Thank I see all you. the beautiful balloons in the background. And you will, too, if you're watching us on Twitch, as you should absolutely be doing. Twitch.tv slash for all nerds do you have any words dj ben i mean um i just want to thank everybody for all the birthday love shout out to all my pisces out there all my grown people you know how we do (laughs) then you know how we do here on views from the 616 because we're here to talk about wandavision this week we're talking about episode eight titled previously on per usual directed by matt shackman teleplay screenplay excuse me uh show ran by Jack Schaefer and all of the staff is credited for writing. Hit that IMDb if you want to see those names. But let's run through the basic plot of this episode to get us started. So this is the true story of Wanda and Vision. Pick to live in a house, work together, and have their lives taped to find out what happens when people stop being polite and start getting real. That's right. <laughs> that was <laughs> a really good. <laughs> you, were, you were like really auditioning for MTV right there, boy. I was. You were going in. You were like, yo, here's my chance. When they do that real world reboot, I, I got, got this. The, I got son, into the real I world got intro. This. Well, that's right, folks. TV time is over, and it's time to start getting to the heart of darkness on this eighth episode of WandaVision. So, we're going to take a trip down memory lane with Wanda and Agatha as we see what's good with the Scarlet Witch herself. Yes, the MCU said it Scarlet Witch. I had to do my Leo face. <laughs> what, was that, what was that thing you just said? That was my Leo face. <laughs> yes, oh. uh, if you need any more indication that Disney bought Fox, here it is. <laughs> we ain't worried about none of that. We ain't, we ain't worried about nothing. Oh my and worry gosh. about nothing. Yeah. So this this was a very powerful episode because it was very <sighs> emotional, super duper <laughs> emotional. People were asking us like, and, and thankfully, thank you to everyone who follows us and tweets us and realizes that we do not spoil the episode, and we largely don't even talk about like actual details until Monday. Like mm-hmm. we understand the 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 show comes out twelve midnight on Friday, but. First of all, Friday's still a work day. People got work to do. Then you have the whole weekend, sure. But, like, we're not going to be those types, okay? So, you, generally speaking, we're never going to put anything that, that spoils stuff just because we just don't think it's fair. But mm-hmm. come Monday, the hell gates open up. So, just yeah. let you know. Because <laughs> I got these jokes, and I be holding off. Top down. I was like, no, you can't even do that yet. Yo. Yo. No, and, it's, and it's hard. And, you know, we realize not everyone goes by that, those tenants, and that's fine. Do what y'all mm-hmm. need to do. But let's let you know how we roll. That said, let's get into the Wait, themes. wait, wait. Where do we roll at? You know, since you mentioned us, you know, might as well let them know to follow us at oh, 4 sure. All Nerds. Follow us at 4 All Nerds on all social media platforms, particularly Twitter and IG, and also on our YouTube channel, where if you miss the live Twitch broadcast, you can see all of our recordings of of all of the shows, including new shows that we've been working on, um, just original production, original content, interviews that we've done. We have content. them all. Um, hit us up 
us youtube.com slash for all nerds tv and you can also find us on virtually every podcast platform at for all nerds that's where you can get all of the your audio goodness and as i said before make sure you're subscribed or follow to us at least follow that's for free if you got some coins you can subscribe to but hit us up on twitch twitch.tv slash for all nerds and this is the views from the 616 podcast so if you're so inclined you can also follow us views from 616 Mm -hmm. on twitter and instagram if you just want that direct that pure that raw straight in the veins you know what i mean absolutely so let's give you the direct when it comes to the themes of this episode say it again the themes of the episode yo hold on what just real quick this whole episode had me lean back like you seen wanda do that <laughs> lean back wanda did the you know wanda's matrix lean back when she, she was you know super matrix lean back yeah you know, when she was bringing vision all up was yeah this is that's how i felt during most of this episode it, it, it's a lot right it, was, it, it, it just it, kept it, punching me in the face it was like yo take this jab oh oh you ready for that oh how about this oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> body uh, blue body blue yeah, one of the rough. major themes that punched us in the gut and the mm. heart was the theme of grief and and technically, this entire series, when you think about it, has been about grief. It's it's generally been revealed that everything that's going on right now and the hex, everything that's going on with Wanda, all of the wild shit that has been occurring is due to Wanda's grief and how she has been, I want to say, not grappling her grief because <laughs> she's really kind of running <laughs> from it. When you when you when you be honest with it, so 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 as we all know, we've all had. And may, maybe if you haven't, you're blessed, but but we've all gone through some form of grief in our lives, whether you lose a loved one, um, whether you you lose out on something or or just 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 there, there are just many ways that it comes to us. And, and you know, there's many ways to also deal with it. But it's also what a lot of people do is they don't deal with it. And that shows up later as as reinforced trauma. It shows up how they treat other people, it shows up of, in their worldview and that's what you have been seeing with Wanda Vision. Wanda has been had been overcome with so much grief off of all the loss she has suffered. Uh, she she even has this moment in this episode where she explains like she just keeps getting hit with waves of of really heartache, depression, sorrow, and at the time at least, Vision seemed to be her only anchor. Mm. Um. This episode brought about one of the coldest lines, in, and I think in TV history at this point. Wow. Where Vision says to her, when, she, when, she's, when she's talking about, when Wanda's talking about all the waves of depression and stuff, when Vision says to her, but what is grief if not love persevering? Mm-hmm. And when he said that, like you said, I did the Matrix fall back, like, oh, that, that hit me in my soul. Because it's just like, that's such a beautiful way to understand and process grief right because Mm -hmm. uh, you're human right so you're only going to necessarily think about the negative part about it you're going to think about the 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 lack as rather than what what grief is reaffirming grief Mm -hmm. is reaffirming your love for someone or something or whatever it was Mm. no i fully agree i've seen someone say the same uh, sentiment in another form where it's like grief is love that you can't show you know what i mean that you that you uh, they didn't say that word it was a be- it was much more beautifully said but it was just that same type of phrasing and i've seen everyone saying how this is such a great line i thought this episode was just you know incredibly written mm. and at the same time i want people to understand as writers that's just what it is it's like these are all themes that have been said and expressed in different ways it's just finding a new way to flip it so it hits people like that yeah. and they found that way because that line it was you know it's succinct it's right there Boom, boom, boom. One, two, mm-hmm. three, four, five, six, eight uh, words. Bookie, bookie, boo. I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> I'm watching eight. too much TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> boopie, boop. Eight words and we done. Yeah. Yes. So, you it, know. It, mm. it, it, was, it was such an incredible line. And again, just something that is very relatable mm-hmm. and, and, and understood across cultures and ethnicities and nationalities and stuff like I that. Mean, and, and, I th- and I really believe that's why it just hit so hard. Yeah. Um, it's like, 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 especially for people, <laughs> right? Especially for people, I've seen so many tweets from people saying they're not a superhero genre type of person. They don't watch Marvel. Mm-hmm. They're not into this, but they are hooked onto WandaVision, and that's why the, the the humanity behind it is what connects everybody. My man tells me this is like what is saving his family right now through this mm. through this whole pandemic because everybody's sick of each other, etc. 
but they know that they got Friday where they can gather as a family. And before yeah. that, it was just him and his daughter. You know, his daughter's a big geek of the family. So it's him and his daughter watching everything like Mando. But this has everyone in the family sitting down, you know, every Friday Absolutely. to watch WandaVision. Absolutely. They, um, they doing it. Don't make that. Uh, they doing it. Yeah. Disrespectful what Marvel is doing to people right now. The previous, <laughs> the previous episodes, I mentioned that. Snyder Cut. Yeah. Um. <laughs> you all right? Okay. I, sla- I slap you up. <laughs> the previous episodes, I mentioned that to me, I realized to me this this series, this WandaVision series, is mm-hmm. Wanda going through the five stages of grief. And and again, you can slot the episodes where you think they fit best, but the five stages are denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and then acceptance. Mm-hmm. And I, I felt like she was in that depression stage in the previous episode and still can I mean, be in it, but, but soon she's going to go enter into the acceptance stage. I think it's one of them things, and as someone who's like personally going through it hard, but I mean, not as much right now, but you know, I'm more in the acceptance, but you still, it's, you know, you, boop, 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 you know, you teeter totter mm-hmm. back and forth through all these joints. As in this episode, we saw anger, we saw denial, we saw bargaining, we saw mm-hmm. depression, mm-hmm. and we saw acceptance, you know, but then it wasn't like that was linear. We saw no, these all, here, right, right, yeah, right. we saw these all whichever way, you know, like one second it's acceptance and one second it's denial. I still go back to denial with my own grief sometimes, you know what I mean? That's just the way it is. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Man, I'll tell y'all, like, psh, I still be like, yo, I was in jail. Right. No, no, I wasn't. Yes, you were. Accept <laughs> um, <laughs> <Except> that. <laughs> You got it. Right. You got it. And and that's what's so difficult, right? She she didn't want to accept the loss of vision, the loss of her future plans, the loss of the you know the things that she she wanted to potentially come true, but will not now come true now, or at least in at the time because vision left, or I mean, I say left, but was taken. Um, and Twice. and so she doesn't want to deal with the acceptance and the reality, and that's why she created this bubble reality of the hex. Yeah, I love how when we get to see the hex from outside, it Mm -hmm. we still have not got to see an overall shot because I'm in my brain trying to put together how these hexagonal panes fit together. Is it you know what I mean? Because there is like hexagonal panes that are making. I think it's like a die shaped thing. I just assume like if you just think of a circle, if you think of of an area view of a circle, I just thought and it put and it put hexes hexes on it. Just 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 it's just connecting lines. It's just literally a giant hexagon. Just just as a pen. You ever seen uh, a play pen in the shape of a hexagon? Same situation. Yep, true, true. That's there what you I go. thought. Yep. That opens the Like door. a dice, yeah. That opens that door, yes, like a box. For the next... No, like a dice. Yep. Oh, like dice. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Sure, sure, your tabletop gamers out there. Yes, sir. That opens up the next <laughs> door for the new theme of... Uh, actually, this is a quote from Agatha, which is, The only way forward is back. Mm. And it also echoes the title of this episode previously on. And also, if you want to summarize it, we're talking about memories. And the episode, this episode opens with Agatha's own memories of her in Salem, Massachusetts in 1693, which we told you all that she's a witch, uh, which would make her, if you're using this timeline, well, we're in 2023 right now, mm-hmm. make her around 330 years old, maybe more. Um, I mean, she, she would probably be older, right? Because I mean, she, she she looks like she's a, she looks like this her grown switch, woman, a grown woman back in Salem, and the yeah. same grown woman she is now. So she's probably even older. But the point is, we see her back in the day in her own situation where she, I assume, she may have went through a form of grief herself. In this, you see her being taken away or being dragged away by a couple. We find out a couple of witches because it seems like her mother is ordering a trial to to or either trial or execution of Agatha by the coven for using dark magic. We do see a group of seven witches, uh, I think eight if you count her mother, but seven witches to try to execute Agatha, but she instead absorbs their magic or their energy, which harkens back to yo magic. When you t- and you said that, Ben, which uh, mm-hmm. that was a great connector, where you said like perhaps it's really the shark just feeding off of this magic. And if you think about it, that's what, well, that's what Agatha did with these witches, that's what Agatha did with her mother, and that's what Agatha may have been doing with, with Wanda, where, as we see, she, she, she is so intrigued to know how Wanda did this and where she get this power and all this other stuff. So she wants to absorb that, that knowledge and that magic. 
Um, and, and, and as I mentioned, her, her mother joins in to deliver that finishing blow, but Agatha absorbs her tool and steals her brooch. Mm-hmm. Agatha, I thought this was, this was why I said why maybe there was some feeling of grief, at, at least maybe momentarily, because Agatha says, or she seems to, I don't know if she's telling the truth, but she seems to plead with her mom. She says, I can be good. Mm-hmm. And her mother very knowingly is like, nah, bro, you can't. Mm. So I've been trying to understand that interaction because I, I, it's her mother just saying it because her mother just, you know, mother knows best. And she really knows the truth about people's, about their daughter, your, your child's character. Or is there something else going on here? Uh, yeah, that scene is real interesting because it's like they are dragging her, right? They put her on the stake. They do all these things to her. They attack her. They are attempting to do whatever they are going to do. They are probably burst her into flames or something to that extent. On the stake, you know, like they do or the witches. strip her of her power. Because I, I would assume if, if all Agatha did was reverse what they were doing, they were trying to strip her power out of her, and instead she started absorbing them, potentially. Potentially there. Also, when she strips the power out of them, you see that she is using the, her purple magic versus their blue magic, but then she also seems to get a combination of the purple and the blue by the mm-hmm. end of it, and that's overpowering them and sucks the l- literal life out of them. Now, people are saying that it seems that these witches are extremely old because when they suck the life out of them, they are desiccated. You know, they are just gross. Now, that could just be that she sucked that much power out of them or they are just this old. So when they die, their true form is revealed and mm. they are, you know, ancient. That happens a lot with witches. Yeah, right? definitely. When, when, they, when they are stripped of that power that helps mm-hmm. keep them looking youthful, then you see they're real. Yeah. Remember, they're hundreds of years old. Yeah. So, so they could, look bad. That yeah. yeah. Um, and bad. this is a good note you made here about Agatha's mother's power. Like when she oh, seems yes. to be at full strength. Mm-hmm. Go Her, ahead. Yeah. When, when she's at, when Agatha is really going in on the rest of the witches, her mother attempts to lay the smack of that. And that was like, once again, I'm still just trying to figure out this relationship because her mother at that point sees that she is serving these other witches, right? So to me, just out of a instinct of self-preservation, I would be like, well, maybe I should just get down with my daughter now and lay down the smack with all these other witches and we just keep it moving. Well, that's why I said where her mom, like, no, you can't. Like, does her mom just know she acts like a hell spawn? Agatha ain't right. Agatha ain't right. She's a hell spawn. What, what's, that, what's that old movie? Um, like the good kid or the bad kid where there's two. It's, it's an old movie with like Macaulay Culkin or something. Oh, God. Where... You're talking about, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I know like what you're talking about. Hell. But that's just like Omen. That's all these other, you know, yeah. that's every movie. Uh, yeah, what's but, this, th- but, but, that, but that's baby? what I'm what's thinking. What's the ancient one, though? Really old movie. I can't remember that. I, I don't know, but that's yeah. what I'm thinking. Like, is it just a situation where her mom's like, nah, bro, this is a demon spawn and, you know, there's, there's, it's not happening. That and that's why she's not going to, so she, her, maybe she, her mother was fed up. That's like the 30th time <laughs> Agatha done did some dark magic shit. And she's like, look, man, I got to do it for the coven. All right. Now there's, uh, I'll, I'll get to another point about that. But yes, when Agatha's mom tries to do in her daughter, um, full on a crown appears out of the magical blue energy on her head. Mm-hmm. That seems very much like Scarlet Witch's traditional mm-hmm. horned costume. And also has something to do, you know, that horn imagery comes up, eh, you know, Mephisto type of thing, the devil, all mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. But now here's another point about um, Agatha, right? Agatha exceeds her ambition, right? Or ambition exceeds whatever she limits have been placed on her. Who else does this sound like in the MCU who uses magic? What, the white I... man, oh, Doctor Strange Dr. himself. Strange? Yes, yeah. Doctor Strange himself in his first film went above and beyond what he was taught and basically what he gets becomes Sorcerer Supreme. Agatha Harkness, the woman, gets burned at the stake. Ah, double standards, right? It happens. <laughs> um, just, just here to point him out. Right. <laughs> and I think that's very intentional by the writers of this show, you know, to show that. Just as also, I all love that the various schools of magic that we're now seeing being not even explained, but explored in the MCU all have their rules as far as their visuals. Like Steven and his school have these, uh, what is it? The circular. We saw um, Mysterio, even though he might be faking it, we saw triangles with his stuff and the green and the triangular magic. And now we're seeing different stuff with this chaos magic and whatever Agatha is using. Yeah. And there's two reasons for that because in the MCU, 
version mm-hmm. of things. They basically explain that magic comes from different dimensions. These people are pulling mm-hmm. magic from different sources in the multiverse, if you will. Yeah. And the reason why, at least on screen, you see it as different colors and shapes and stuff is just to more easily differentiate between when people are using powers and what they're doing, especially when you have things like ensemble scenes where there's multiple characters. Mm -hmm. And it just makes it easier to follow the action and see who's doing what. And it's also that they are different schools of magic. And so their styles and everything are going to be represented differently. And that's why I really like because Stephen Strange is like the Eldritch school. I think they were calling his uh, form of magic. And now we have chaos magic and whatever Wanda. I mean, I'm not sure if like they're all doing. If Wanda and Agatha are both using chaos, and Wanda is just like the ultimate expression. Is perp is you know Scarlet? Oh, like Scarlet different forms of fire. Like, yeah. like, like 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 blue yeah. fire is hotter Scarlet than yellow beats fire. Purple. Maybe. Yeah, maybe, maybe. You know. Oh, we we playing Uno now. Blue. Yeah. <laughs> we playing Wanda Vision Uno now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Wanda was like, in <laughs> draw foe. <laughs> you know, hard. She came with it. Just when you was about to call Uno, you sitting there feeling good. <laughs> no. This this flip, sequence flip of events that happens next is is uh, just really good TV. Where Agatha she uses Wanda's hair and and does this incantation mm-hmm. to essentially visit Wanda's memories, and they she opens literal portals to view that. And and because her whole purpose is to try to find the root of how Wanda became so powerful. Mm-hmm. Also, a call back to once again Stephen Strange using Thor's hair to find uh, Odin. Mm. Yep, mm-hmm. because your hair has your essence in it. I mean, your hair literally—if you talk about science—it has your DNA right up in it. That's there you. you. Go. Yep. That's and you, like they bro. said, that science—I mean, the magic in the MCU is just a very highly evolved form of science. Correct. Correct. Yep. Correct. And and this is also if you if you want to be. Res- like super connective there's there's they show four portals which also mm-hmm. four walls we talked about fourth wall breaking and the first oh. yep in the first portal we have a visit to wanda's family in old sokovia <laughs> uh, good old sokovia good old sokovia boys just shooting on the block in the don't middle mind of, them. Of, of civil war or whatever yeah, is going on there don't mind them guys shooting on the block that's don't every mind night them guys yeah we get to meet a uh, baby. I, I call him baby, not baby, but little boy Pietro. <laughs> little loud Pietro. Pietro. Little loud oh, ass Pietro. Oh my God. Well, Agatha, Pietro. Agatha wasn't feeling it. Pietro was trying to be on uh, that show. Um, um, <laughs> Mom! <laughs> oh gosh. You have. Him, him and Pietro oh, need to battle. Our four all nerds listeners know what we're talking about. Him, but... him and Pietro need to battle, boy. Oh. You meet Irina. Racing, that's it. That's all I'll say. Yeah. You meet Irina, <laughs> which is Wanda's mother, and Oleg, which is her dad. Mm-hmm. Oleg, I'm I'm not sure what his cause his um occupation is, but maybe he's a bootleg salesman, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's Oleg. Okay, because he seems he has this he has this uh briefcase, and he seems to be selling American contraband, like entertainment DVDs and potentially other commercial wares, because he goes into a wall to grab um that DVD for Wanda, and I saw a bunch of Nike boxes. So either mm. he just been using the Nike boxes for storage, like a lot of people do, or he was selling selling some dunks on the side. Who knows? Oh, Oleg had them dropped. Oh, so this is ninety nine. Oleg had oh, Oleg son. had that, you know, the Jordans, you know, the Jordan OGs. So. Ninety nine. Oh yeah, that's like early dunks, right? Yeah, that's stupid early. And that ain't even dunks, but yeah, Oleg this moving. Is, Jordan ones, whatever. But this yeah, is, whatever. He pop, pop This is indicative of a lot of countries outside, you know, and to this case, it's Eastern European, but a lot of countries where it was just like Americanized stuff and Western stuff is typically banned. So this is mm-hmm. all this entertainment and news and, and wares are all considered contraband. And that's why they're all hidden or he's being kind of funny about letting too many people know about it. Because they did not want people to get a taste of a democratic society in a communist run country because they did right. not want people to dream but there was other ways to see the world and thus you know want to get right, out of what right, they were in right and we we do see that these contraband dvds and i'm calling that are in his suitcase and in the walls this is what the family uses for tv nights and to practice their english mm-hmm. and literally all of these dvds are happen to be all of the shows that wanda used to to base all of her episodes over uh, all of her episodes of wandavision out of like you see i love lucy you see um, the Adams family. You see Malcolm in the Middle again. That's which a huge didn't come one. out yet. Which at didn't. That point. And that's on. And I, I caught that because this was supposed to be like ninety nine, right? And yep. when did Malcolm Middle come out? Like two thousand. Well, the DVD didn't come out till two thousand and two. Well, for, forget the, the but but if it's bootleg, I mean, that you was just the, record true it. bootleg. Okay, if it's true. bootleg, okay. you just recording <laughs> it. But when did the show come out? Malcolm in 2000. the Middle. 
two thousand. Okay, so so maybe we're we're. we're he had okay. the early cut, you know what I mean? Oleg was connected. Let's just, right. you know. He was yeah. connected. So let, let's just say he was connected, okay? Because, But I thought, but just in case, I just wanted to mention that because I'm just like, wait a minute, Malcolm Mill didn't come out yet. So Oleg had the screeners. Or, right. Maybe he had the screeners. Who knows? Um, the, you made a point here that we see another version mm-hmm. of, a, of kids playing Wanda and Pietro. Yes. And, from, now, this is a memory, potentially, right? So why no, are you different? What it is is when... Uh, Pietro told Wanda, remember when we went trick-or-treating and blah, 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 and it was two kids. Those are not the same kids that we see in this scene because Pietro was lying, and that's not Pietro, and mm-hmm. that memory was not your know, Pietro. The false memory, yeah. Yeah, that false, you know, false memory from the fake Pietro. So that's what that was. So now we've seen the real, you know, Wanda and Vision. I mean, not and Vision, <laughs> Wanda and Pietro. And loud ass Pietro is how he's always been. Yeah, loud ass Pietro. <laughs> and this is a very fateful scene and evening because this is the night that they watched what Wanda points out as season two, episode 21 of the Dick Van Dyke show. And also the same night where the bombing happened, mm-hmm. the same bombing that blew her parents to smithereens. Mm-hmm. And where a second bomb came landing into their home but was defective. But the kids didn't know that, so they got trapped for two days praying and hoping that it didn't blow up on them and a start bomb is is revealed in this vision and in this episode as not being defective and that the reason why and this is like well like, is that because i yes well no, here's no, so so in this conversation that you're mm-hmm. referring to agatha says oh like you first of all you see want to reach out to maybe do some magic or something on it no, and the then she hex. gets then she gets pulled away and then mm-hmm. agatha asks did you use a probability hex? Yep. But yes. Wanda says no. Wanda's lying. Is she lying or does she not know? <laughs> Wanda doesn't like, know. That's the other thing. But yes, But that's Wanda... not lying. Not knowing and not lying are two different things. Okay. No, not knowing and lying, excuse me, are two Denying different things. Denying the reality, however... No, denial means you know. I don't think she realized. I think it's a bit of denial then. There's definitely mm. a bit of denial in all of this. In, in Wanda's whole life, as we have seen, is a lot of denial. And yes, Wanda... Yeah, Wanda has, is, okay, th- now, this might be the moment that they are introducing mutants into the MCU, because Wanda is, has powers from birth, it seems. You know, something is yeah. in her genes, right? This is before she's experimented on. This is just from gate. Now, we'll get into the potentials of what this could be, because I saw you had something about Dark Phoenix and this whole uh, future reaching back. It could be a lot of things going on here right now, right? But the main thing for this scene alone is that, yes, Wanda stopped that bomb from blowing up. One, Stark doesn't make BS, right? That, that's the first clue. His bombs blow up. He's the number one weapons manufacturer. He's not Justin Hammer in the MCU, who we've seen makes defective technology. This Stark kills people. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. The first bomb blew up. And uh, secondly, the first bomb blew up right next to them. They are sitting next to their parents. They, they were, should be dead. They were on They're, the floor. They were on the floor. And they should be the dead. Parents were sitting on the couch. <laughs> sitting on the couch. They should be dead. You know what I mean? Just like their parents. But also, why is the TV still on? Well, with that happens a, DV- a lot. With, with a DVD player? Well, listen, that actually happens a lot <laughs> in accidents where, like, you can't, like, first of all, everything's random, right? When yes. something blows up, things randomly, uh, in a way, what go does elsewhere. Wanda but that influence random events sure sure I, I i guess what i'm saying is it could be both ways right because in yep. real life accidents that does happen where mm-hmm. a car may be going down a fucking ditch but the radio's still playing yeah and that just so happens that part didn't get damaged so i i believe to me that was still realistic that potentially the tv could have still been on and still been playing or it maybe not because if that bomb really blew up the entire infrastructure there would have been no electricity to play it in the first place so it, Wanda. It be, but, but but I but I don't believe Wanda was lying when she said no. That's not what I did. I just whether it's a it's a piece of denial or or, or, or uh, of of Wanda's floating down purpose, that river in Egypt right now. She's swimming <laughs> right through that. It joint. wasn't purposeful. I, whether she knew or not, she I don't think it was. She was aware. She bat stroking through that river in Egypt right now. She, sure. <laughs> no, whether whether sure, or not she sure, aware sure, of it, sure. I don't know. She's sure. pretty deep in that river, so I the, feel like yeah. If that was, and also if this was, say for in my head, this wasn't denial at all. This was just her not realizing what she was doing. If we're if we're if we're talking, and, and you mentioned mutants, right? It's mm-hmm. been as what we've known from the Fox universe. 
something traumatic typically happens to activate the powers of the yes. now, again they're are, they are, they're born with it it's in their genes but something mm-hmm. traumatic typically happens t- in order for that to manifest we yes. saw it in the i forgot which movie but the movie where they showed the beginning of magneto where mm-hmm. he was being taken away from his family in the concentration camps and he reached out to like like try to like they were trying to pull him away he was trying to stop him and he reached out and that's when his magnetic energies or, or, or powers rather started manifesting and yep. it's, and it's and not every mutant works like that but mm-hmm. a lot of them you see that's what happens with all the kids it's like something yep. wild happens to their family or them something that triggers them and then it clicks on there you go and so this perhaps was this was her traumatic thing I mean, what else could it be right <laughs> to now, make it click on for her and then here's another theory to throw this out there right quick are those really wanda and pietro's parents are they adopted you know we haven't seen that. We don't know, you know, every true clue about this because, you know, maybe her dad is Magneto, just throwing that out there. Um, maybe, but I don't know. But at the same time, here's another one. Did Wanda give Pietro her his powers? Did she give him his powers? Is she the reality manipulator? Oh. Where she, and so to protect him, here's powers of speed. You know, here, now you'll be able to protect yourself. I mean. Or are they both mutants, you know? and. If so, why does he have powers of speed? And she, you know, he got, man, he got played. If I don't think he got played. You really fam! Think, you you think got he got speed? played to have super speed, super speed She's to the point chaos, where you can stop man. time? But to, no, just because he's not OP doesn't mean he has <laughs> whack powers. Are you serious right now? This is, look, the, this is the same type of powers that we see in uh, on another fucking universe called DC where the man changes fucking timeline. Quicksilver ain't that quick, though. <laughs> you know, like, Quicksilver uh, saved 46 people and a dog out of a house that was blowing up, actively blowing up. And that that's, and that's, and that's a small, doesn't matter. Cause yeah. that's, that's who we got right now. And that's a small <laughs> fraction of what Quicksilver do. Don't, don't disrespect Quicksilver. Back I, then, I I'm, mean. I'm taking Flash in a, in a, a race. Okay. Hold We're going to move on. Cause he's yeah. going to make me mad. <laughs> We're going to move on. But wait, yeah. But, but just before we move on, let's stay with that. Is that, there's a potential that she did give him his powers. And yes, she, I, and my theory, I'm going hard on this is yes, she has been a mutant since birth. And that traumatic event was the first thing that brought them out. He saved 53 people, a dog, <laughs> and a goldfish, my nigga. <laughs> you Googled that. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. I've, I've been sitting here just like, just thinking. But, <laughs> see, my hands are here. But um, so 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 let's move on to the second portal, the second door. Uh, also, which... in that scene, we see the we hear the sad minor key version of the ending, or it sounds oh. very similar to the song from Infinity War when they're all sitting on the ground, you know, uh, realizing that Thanos has snapped away the world. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. I didn't catch that one, but okay. Yep, it's right when they walk in, when you're first walking into the door. And anything the... else for this scene for this door? Mm-mm. Nope. All right. So door two, we go through and we end up on the, I was calling it the Hydra base, some, some random Hydra spot in Sokovia. Because as we know, when, after the the death of their parents and as they grew Mm -hmm. up, Wanda and Pietro radicalized and essentially joined Hydra as volunteers because they wanted to save the world or get the world to move differently. But it's a terrorist organization, as Agatha points out. She says, so in response to your parents dying, you join a terrorist organization that wants to take away freedom. <laughs> and, and again, Agatha is killing it this entire killing episode it. when it just comes to just telling it like it is. And, and also being a little disrespectful in it, but so what? But also, it's like, that was one of the lines where it's like, is Agatha on the side of the angels? Or at least, you know, hoping to get there. Because she's really like, if she was really, you know, about that life, she'd be like, hey, join a terrorist organization. So what? But she really questions it in a way like, yo, you know, if you wanted to change the world, that's not the way you do it, fam. Mm-hmm. So, you know. And there's and another this- moment later on when she actually sheds a tear that you're really yeah. like, yeah, okay, there's well, something I even, going on. I don't even know if she was really shedding the tears or not. Like, it looked like she was, but Agatha is funny style like that. But see, in that scene, uh, Wanda is not looking at her when she does it. So she's not doing it for Wanda's sake. Maybe. You know, she's really yeah. shed. She's really wiping away the tear before Wanda even sees it. Right. Yep. So I think there's, you know, I think Agatha's, you know, but we'll get into that too. Okay. In this scene, we you see got something big here. Yeah. The experimentation of Wanda as a mm-hmm. volunteer, where they're exposing her to the Mind Stone, which 
we see, you know, if you understand that Wanda always had these powers, then the Mind Stone just amplified her powers. And she's mm -hmm. the first to survive exposure because the two scientists mentioned how no one else has, you know, survived the end of this. What we see is very interesting because Wanda goes into that room. The, we, as the audience, sees the stone pop up out of the, the scepter that it was in. You know, maybe if y'all remember, Loki had that scepter running around. Yep. It pops out of the scepter, it floats over to Wanda. She's staring at it. It's very psychedelic, you know, very much of, of Wanda on E. And then it explodes and we see a very bright light in what appears to potentially be the spirit of the Scarlet Witch. And it's like coming on to her. Now, I saw this and I was like, wait, 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 wait. Are they starting to get into the possession game? Like, is this some Jean Grey Dark Phoenix shit? Or is this just MCU explanation of who she is? Because the way they explain, at least Agatha explains Scarlet Witch, she explains that is more of a mantle or a title or even its own entity onto itself. Because she says to Wanda, you are the Scarlet Witch. Mm-hmm. So but, what is what exactly is this power? Is MCU trying to explain this that this you know, again this is some spirit, this is some thing being that 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 now is imbued within Wanda, or is it something else? Okay, I think it's something else. First, like you said, we see the the stone and the scepter flow forward, and then it reveals itself to be the Mind Stone, which doesn't happen until Vision is created. Right. But Wanda and the audience and the scientists see this because there's a quick shot of the scientists seeing that same bright yellow light. So they're even seeing that bright yellow light, right? I that's debatable. Okay, I'm going what they do now. This all right, let me let me go let me go with my theory right here. Right? They see the everyone sees the bright yellow light, right? What I seriously doubt the scientists see all this other shit or see anything other than a bright yellow light. What Wanda sees is. The Mind Stone come up out of its shell. She stares at that for a second, like you say, feel like she on E. Then there's the fiery image of the Scarlet Witch costume, which people on YouTube and everywhere else and Twitter have already highlighted so that we are seeing what appears to be that same image from the posters where Wanda in the WandaVision posters is wearing what appears to be a version of the Scarlet Witch costume that mm -hmm. looks like reverse vision colors scarlet mm -hmm. witch costume so she matches the vision skin but it's like the scarlet witch's costume so we see that in that image and what i'm thinking is not spirit not a even though in the comments they, they did a dark scarlet witch series during that same time when vision turns white but that's been more of her like mental break type things where she starts adopting different personalities instead of like being possessed by an entity like the Dark Phoenix. Now, what another key thing that Agatha says to her is that you're supposed to be a myth. You're not supposed to be real. So right. the, to me, the idea of a Scarlet Witch is someone who operates, at, like we were saying before, at the highest level of chaos and magic. And it's just naturally born into them, which is why Agatha, throughout something else she seems to have been doing throughout this series, has been testing Wanda to see you know, what level of spell casting she's at. You can yeah. do that when she's asked to raise the dead. She gives her things like recipes and stuff, which might have been spells in the very first episode. And Wanda ignores all of that and just does her stuff. And that's what keeps tripping Agatha out. So Agatha, throughout this episode, keeps asking her, how the hell did you do all of this? Mm -hmm. How did when you get you chose? Can't, when you don't even know what a ward is. You walked right into my ward and you don't even know what a ward is. So how can you do all of this? Because it's a mythical being. You know, she doesn't. she's not supposed to exist. Yeah. And this might be the first time she's there. So now I don't think it's that it's a possession. I think it's that her seeing what she will become. Uh, the mind stone yeah. is showing so, you. So like you know, a future. This, it's showing yeah, her this future. is you. Yeah. Okay. This like is you. Coming, this is you coming. This is your life. I mean, yeah. You're coming because into that's, yourself. Because this episode is a this is your life episode for Wanda as they're going back through her life. And while the stone true. is showing her her future life. Very true. And and I quickly Maiden watched... Maiden Crone will get... Oh, see? Mother Maiden Crone. I quickly oh. watched that scene again. And yeah, the scientists do see that bright light. Yep. Flash. yep. Um, obviously, mm -hmm. they, don't see this, they don't see the whole vision of, no, of, no, no, of no. Scarlet. But they and do then see that light. afterwards, when they're looking at their footage, the footage has been edited just like the episodes that we were watching where vision jumped where something wasn't right. And... Mm -hmm. Like we've said before, views from the six one six are 
I know we both said this. I think that uh, we don't think that she was even editing those episodes. Right. Just we like, said maybe it's somebody else hiding that detail. Just like I think someone else hid this detail right here. Now, was it the Mind Stone? Which, you know, remember, the uh, stones are also sentient in a level. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, was it the stone itself or was it someone yeah. else? Yeah. Yeah. On that video, even though the scientists saw generally everything on that video, you see Wanda mm-hmm. stand there and then it's, 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 it out. jumps to her just <laughs> being passed out. Yeah. And, and you're, that's exactly the question I had. Was that Scarlet Witch or that being with or, or, or the, the mm-hmm. essence of the stone hiding the interaction? from being recorded and is it still in play right now within the hex or what's going on now there's the other idea is that her future self reaching back you know what i mean is that is that wanda in the future going back and be like mm. doing a bill and ted and being like let me edit this footage you know let me do this let me do that i don't know that'll start getting into a lot and that would might invalidate a lot of these films You're starting to get to uh, terminator territory where she, yeah because the timeline it's, not making sense yeah be, and, and they've done they're damnedest besides Cap to keep things straight, you know? Like they just had effort with Cap and his living whatever life because <laughs> that don't make no damn sense. But you know, we go keep it moving. Yeah, you know, let the man live. <laughs> so uh, real quick, afterwards, uh, after this, you know, scene with the stone, Wanda's back in her cell and she's mm-hmm. watching an episode of the Brady Bunch, which is entitled Kitty's Carry All is Missing, or Kitty Carry All. Okay. And the plot of Kitty Carry All feature, features Cindy Brady, the youngest in Curls, the youngest Brady girl, her beloved dog going missing. She suspects her brother Bobby stole it, but it turns out that it's in the doghouse. The uh, episode is important because Kitty Carry All is the same doll that we saw Vision dressing or practicing his, you know, uh, oh, doing diaper, the diaper changing. changing. Yeah, doing his diaper changing. Oh, that was in, the same doll. Same doll in the Brady Bunch mm-hmm. episode when they're in the Brady Bunch house. And also, Bobby calls the doll, he says, the doll ain't got no emotion, Cindy. It's full of sawdust. You know, stop all that worrying about this damn doll. Just Cold-blooded. like what? Just like what people have basically said about Vision throughout his whole career and life. Like, even in the comic books, people have really straight up to Wanda have told her, or, you know, yo, he doesn't really feel anything, blah, 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 et cetera. You know, it's been yeah. rough. I think Hayward has that personality and view when it comes to vision Max. he always refers to vision as a thing as mm-hmm. opposed to a person he always yeah. says sentient weapon mm-hmm. when he talks to wanda he says oh well you have the power to bring him online right. like as if he's a computer which he is but he makes as nothing more than a than a than a vessel of of circuits and microchips as opposed to something with feelings and it's is literally a sentient being yeah, he basically calls him a walking siri he calls him a toaster. Yeah. Oh. Vibrator. It's sad. <laughs> that leads us to the third portal, the door, the third door. Yeah. Uh, Hayward is definitely Bobby in this one. Yeah. yeah. The third door is us on the Avengers, or rather Wanda and Vision on the Avengers compound. Mm. And Wanda, she <sighs> looks effed up. She sees she's clearly going through it, laying on the bed, watching. You know, she's watching TV again. Um, she notes... <laughs> When she's talking to Agatha, Wanda mentions that this is the first home she actually shared with Vision, mm-hmm. meaning that was the first place that they really be, were able to bond and talk to each other and discover who they are as people and how they felt about each other. This and, was like their yeah. first real bonding moment, I think we're seeing right here. It seems like it because again, all of these, all these major moments is are the the thread of all of the episodes that are happening within mm-hmm. the hex. Yeah, and on this bed, she's watching what Malcolm in the Middle. Yep, and she invites Vision in, which is why this is such a major memory, and why Malcolm becomes a, a huge catalyst for the previous episode. Yes, and also it calls back to the epi- I mean, not the episode, <laughs> the film in Civil War where Vision walks through the wall, and Wanda says, "We talked about this before, Viz." And oh, so by she's, just walking through the wall without unannounced. Yeah, and so she's more, much more familiar. Like that's the first time she calls him Viz in any of the things, which is from the comic books. You know, where she's like real familiar with him while in this one she's still calling him vision and he just walks through the wall and that's like them this is the scene where they were talking about this mm. hurts when breathe yeah. <laughs> and i gotta like, say 
I gotta yeah, say, say it because I, I know what you're about to say. say uh, do you? I don't know. I, I don't I know. We so. might be talk- go, no, go ahead. What were you gonna say? No, no, go ahead because I want I want to hear what you got to say. That's why I, I think I yeah I think I know what you're about to say here. Well, I I want I mentioned this on a our text with you, but mm-hmm. I really love their relationship. Yes, like I, and this is a complete 180 from me. <laughs> Three sixty seven twenty. <laughs> you flip like twice around <laughs> maybe but this is a complete 180 from how I felt all throughout the MCU films Oof. because every time I would see them on screen every time they would push their relationship I'd be like I don't want to see this shit I don't believe them as a couple like I was the one like nah 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 that shit is whack that shit is whack people, to, people need to go back and listen to our Age of Ultron review that's I, what I, I want to hear the, I want to hear that because I, I, I know you went in it. I don't even I can stand it but now I get it it's mm. all making sense. And I appreciate the seeds that were sown by, mm. by Kevin Fahey and the whole team there. Because mm-hmm. regardless of how I felt, I still had that understanding and that notion like, okay, their relationship's going to be a factor. They're, mm. they're pushing this hard because this is going to matter in the future. Mm-hmm. And boy, does it matter because I, am, I, I love their relationship. I, I completely believe that they belong together. I completely believe in their relationship and that it's real and that the love is real. And I just like watching them interact so much. I mean, Bettany and Olsen are just doing like incredible work. And I've I've loved them from the gate. And I don't know if that's because of my predisposal, you know, predisposition to them because I grew up, you know, that was my first. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's it. That was my first couple in comics, you know, that I followed yeah. that I knew. And I loved them both. You know, I love Vision and I love Scarlet Witch. They were just both dope ass characters. And I, when they broke up, when they got broken up, I hated it. I was so upset that I stopped reading that comic book and never went back to it because it was like I stopped the, reading Avengers. For the ever. funny part about that is the writer at the time who had control over Wanda and Vision story, they actually hated Wanda and Vision being together, which is yes. why they got broken up in the first oh, place. Oh, I know all this. This is John Byrne. John Byrne. Uh, yeah. Yeah. John Byrne, who's one of my favorite writer artists of all time. John Byrne is a beast. Like he's such a monster. You know his art. And he did some of my favorite stories, but he's also a dude who likes things the way it was. Mm. And when it started, Vision was a cold, emotionless robot, you know, and so he never got past them making him this more human person. But when I started reading was like the first issues when Vision becomes more human, you know, and so that was like my vision. And then him and Scarlet Witch got together. Well, they were already together then, but this is when he really started when their relationship really just got together and that's when they got married and all this. And I, it was amazing. And so mm-hmm. when he, when John Byrne broke him up as much as he's one of my favorites, I was like, man, F this comic. And then John Byrne left like four issues later and they fixed it. Like, you know, 50 issues later, but they mm-hmm. never got back together. So it was whack. Whack. <laughs> I mentioned that Juan is watching Malcolm in the middle and this mm-hmm. episode is special. What about it, Ben? Uh, Malcolm in the middle of the episode they're watching is entitled Health Insurance. And in this episode, Hal, the dad, uh, Walter White himself. Walter White, yeah. <laughs> once again, <laughs> loses the family insurance. Look at, you know, <laughs> Shout out to Brian Cranston. That's the first, that was my first introduction to Brian. Uh, Me too. Malcolm in the middle. Yeah, I think, I think a lot of people man. it was. I loved him. And that was so crazy. That's what the first thing, because when, when Breaking Bad started, it was like, Malcolm in the middle? You know? <laughs> Is gonna be a gangster? What? And then yes, he is. So um, Hal loses the family insurance. How the dad loses the family insurance. So he's trying to safeguard his family and not tell them that he's lost the family insurance. So he does all these things around the house, trying to fix the house up, make it ultra safe. safe proof. And that's the scene we saw when the uh, outside bo- gazebo falls in on him. Right, right. And so Wanda, he, locks, he locks his sons in the room. Yes, uh, to keep them safe, allegedly. Yeah. And yeah. that's also like how Wanda was locked up in her room during Civil War, during this scene that we see. You know, she is actually on lockdown during this scene that we see. When we think about it, the hex itself is this episode because mm-hmm. she's lost her insurance of <laughs> her assurance and insurance of vision. Vision is her anchor. Oh. Vision, that's her love. That's everything. She, she's <laughs> essentially lost it all. So what is she doing? She's locking herself, herself mm-hmm. and other people inside to keep them safe. Mm-hmm. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. I don't know about but, but it's so much pain. But yeah, it ain't, it, allegedly. It, it ain't safe. It ain't safe. <laughs> Once again, Agatha with the hilarious and <laughs> fucked up comment. So to recap, parents dead, brother dead, and vision dead. And it's just like <laughs> Agatha's that person that has to always say the obvious. Yeah. Regardless of how much it hurts. Yep. And so, in this scene, yeah. 
Yeah, once again, we see we hear a minor key version of the Avengers, like the Avengers big theme, you know, the one we all know and love yeah. is playing real, you know, sad and somber in the background. Yeah. Hurts. Oh. And then we get to the fourth portal, the fourth door, which is Sword HQ. This is more closer to present day. Now we know something very important, which is what I actually said a couple episodes, uh, episode or two ago. Mm -hmm. I said there's something up with that video. The video is revealed that the video that the video that Hayward showed Monica and the crew was edited, which means Wayward Hayward has been lying. We told y'all we don't trust this nigga over here. We don't. (laughs) Fuck with him, have not from Jump Street, and there's more proof of why you shouldn't trust him either if you still trust him for some odd reason. You know, something that we haven't really mentioned is that his name is Hey Ward, you know, like Ward. Ward? Like, yeah, like Ward, like a mystical Ward, like the mm-hmm. same Wards that are trapping Wanda. Mm-hmm. You know, potentially, I listen, I, I told you there was something up, like in his office, I said mm-hmm. this four episodes back, in his office, there's a crystal ball on his desk. Yep. Yeah, people and, have all sorts of random shit on my desk. I have random shit on my desk, but a crystal ball, like, I think it's it, the stuff you have on your desk, in your room, in a place that represents you is representative of your personality and things that are important to you or things that you enjoy or things that you use as tools. The crystal ball, at least in this, this is, this is a long running theme of Wizard of Oz also in WandaVision. That crystal ball is someone who's trying to look into the future, trying to see things, trying to get information, shit like that. Yes, again, it could just be a be a categorization prop, but also is it something else? Who is this dude Hayward? Also in his office, he has his diplomas arranged in a hexagonal shape. So this man ain't right in one way or the other. <laughs> he ain't right in the head. He ain't yeah, right. either, you know, because who does that? Like who really puts up on their wall, you know, a hexagonal shape? Like, no. Yeah. Yeah. Another thing that is becomes very clear, uh, th- the biggest lie that Hayward ever told was mm. that Wanda stole Vision's body. Mm. That shit didn't fucking happen. Wanda went to S.W.O.R.D., asked to see Vision's body. She walked up, to, like everybody else do in New York, they walk up to the, the front desk and be like, yo, I need to go to the fifth floor. They say, let, let me see your ID. ID. Let, let me, me call, call up and see they let you up. <laughs> That's how it works. Yes. So she asked and she... Was was more or less polite about it. Then Hayward saw her on the on the cameras and invited her in. And even after she walked in and they had the discussion, she was looking at Vision's body. She she got mad, broke the glass to get in. She she was still allowed to see Vision. So it wasn't like she broke in, took him, and 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 yeeted out of there. Like she 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 floated down, was viewing him. Hayward's like, let her see it so she can see that it's real. And then Wanda left without Vision's body. She got in her car and drove her little tail over to Westview. Mm -hmm. And Hayward straight up goaded her into everything in that Absolutely. And he's watching her actions. The only thing that surprised me about it is like, yo, I mean, like, whatever you feel about Hayward, my man is iron. You know, he is steel because I am not messing with this woman who almost killed Thanos. Mm -hmm. And my man straight up is just, you know... (laughs) Yeah. Let, me, oh. let me give you this jab. Let me get this he jab. Let me see what you're going to do. He's poking her. He also keeps inceptioning her. Because yeah. He, to me, is the one who inceptioned her. That with, like, she didn't realize this with this idea that she could bring vision to life. Yes. He says specifically when she's talking about wanting him back and stuff, and he's trying to make him like he's just a toaster. He says, "Well, to the, to answer her about you know giving him the body, he goes, you have the power to bring people back to life. We wouldn't mm-hmm. want that to happen.'" And she's looking, and she's not. She, she not, that was the last thing on Wanda's mind. She didn't realize she had that power or potential to do something like that. So to me, this is Hayward sowing the seeds of the events of this hex. And I even think in that scene, he was hoping that she would bring him back to life because all right, let's look yeah. at him, let's look at him deeper. Right, he is having them cut this vision up right in front of her they've had it for five years as revealed later on they've been trying to put it back together and restart all the time so they were not cutting it up until she got there it is all psychological they are sitting there chopping her mans up in front of her to make Mm -hmm. it be it just you know completely just pulling them apart just Mm -hmm. all kind of griminess because that's all just a side you know that's all psyop to make her go in there Mm -hmm. and try and put him back together Right in front of their face. Big time they, psyop. They're not, like I say, I'm not sure if Hayward is exactly evil. It's more the idea that it's like, yo, Vision is a weapon that could protect the Earth from Thanos-type threats. 
I just saw half of the universe snapped out. I need this thing back online. Right. The same way S.H.I.E.L.D. is not potentially evil, but the shit that they do is effed up. The way they go about it, like, in that way, I don't fuck with you musically. Like, you may have a good idea, but the way you went about it ain't right. But if Thanos shows up again, if Thanos shows up again, you gonna be, me and you sitting at our crib in Brooklyn, gonna be much happier if Vision is alive out there fighting. We ain't gonna be worried about how he came back. You know, we gonna be like, well, right. yay, Vision! <laughs> <laughs> oh, you white now? Cool! <laughs> you know, like, please save me! <laughs> you know, like, that's Australia. <laughs> Another uh, a big question that got brought up about Sword having Vision's body and all this. How exactly did Sword get Vision's body in the first place? Because I thought the last place he was, his body, was in Wakanda. Dead. Because that's when um, Shuri was trying to get his memories out and all this mm-hmm. other stuff. And, you know, his, the, all sorts of shit happened, right? The stone yep. got taken, all sorts of shit. But as far as I knew, Vision's body was still in Wakanda. How does Sword have it? Now, we, I don't believe that the Avengers would just have given Sword's, uh, Vision's body to Sword. I don't... You could try to someone. Someone could try to say, "Oh, well, you know, they wasn't thinking about it." I'm like, really though? They would just leave a comrade behind, regardless no. of how much fucked up shit was happening around them. No. So I was just like, so what? What really happened? Did Sword steal Vision's body, or did they take it under some type of legal precedence? Because Hayward, whether he he's being a dickhead or not, he says, "Well, it's ethical and legal obligation to to dismantle this body." So how did they get the body? Sokovia Accords. This is all uh, just because of I'm going to say that uh, Captain America and then probably took the body out of Wakanda. Because remember, Cap's there. He's taking the body with him. Starlet Witch is gone. They're taking the body back to America. And the UN, et cetera, is coming down on them hard. Like, Sokovia Accords, da 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 mm. Y'all are already, you know, fugitives from justice at this point. Mm. You so know, it's political. It's political. Half of the universe is it. gone again. Once again, F y'all on y'all feelings. Y'all fucked up. <laughs> Give us this body and shut up. And you know, <laughs> okay. Once I'll again, go, like you know, if you're that. a normal human who just survived a snap, you'd probably tell the Avengers, "F y'all feelings too." Give them the body. What are y'all doing with it? And going back to something that I'm going to point out on our Twitter <laughs> and stuff in a second, Ultron was originally created as a shield around the world. That's what Tony said, and that's what he screams on Cap about when he finally sees him in Endgame. He's like, "I wanted to create a shield around the world, and you stopped me." Mm. you know it didn't come out right of course but that's what he wanted you know and so that's all they're trying to do with vision is get back to that shield around the world right. and we're gonna put a pin in that we're coming back to that, that yeah and the so cataract had a very familiar name of ultron so oh yeah oh, we're gonna get to that i'm gonna hurt some feelings <laughs> uh rounding out this this <laughs> this glass door wanda drives to westview to see that house lot that her and vision i Again, this is debatable that her mm-hmm. and Vision purchased is at 2800 Sherwood Drive, um, yep. Sh- Sherwood Forest, Robin Hood. Uh, the deed has a hand drawn heart and a message to grow old in uh, V. It looks like a message that potentially Vision wrote to to um, Wanda. The thing is, it seems like this is this house is a surprise to Wanda mm-hmm. because she's when she drives up and looks around, it looks like she's seeing shit for the first time. Yes. Um, during that scene, Wanda becomes incredibly overcome with the grief. And she releases just untold amounts of chaos energy, which manifests itself as the hex. You see that wall of energy f- travel throughout West- Westview and start changing. F- that's, that begins the hex, where it flips everything to the 50s, or her version of the 50s. Uh, and she also, we saw ben Ami mention the, the, the Matrix the Matrix move that she does, she creates Vision from this energy, which mm. would explain why Vision can't leave the hex, because he doesn't exist outside of the hex. Oh, but Ben I, Ami has different thoughts. I know. I, I, it just hurt. Let me tell you, ah. <laughs> when Wanda did that Matrix lean back and Vision started coming out in the yellow mind stone, mind yeah. energy, I sat on my couch and said, oh, no. Like, mm. I, 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 it was like, oh, no. Because I, I, you know, it, it doesn't feel good mm-hmm. right now. Yeah. Well, yeah. it also partly answers the question that people have been having, like, is this really Vision or some ghost or a zombie? Da, da, da. It's neither. It's it's a different version of Vision born from Wanda. Hmm. But, hmm. Yeah. But what does, yeah, I am. And what what does that mean, you know? 
Well, uh, we already saw that he can't get, leave the hex. When he once, he, as soon as he left the hex, he started Humpty Dumpty, right? He, he, mm-hmm. he started p- back pulling apart, into the hex. And, and 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 the hex tried to pull him back in. And this is, this is, and this is when I again, this they they, they this is a, this is a fictional story, right? So they bend rules of science and things like that. Technically, as 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 what they say in science, energy cannot be created nor destroyed. Mm-hmm. This is why they say things like, well, these sorcerers and people they. Take it. they borrow energy essentially from other universes. The energy yep. is always existing, the power and all that's existing, the magic that they're just taking it from different places and forming it into something else. So she's not creating him out of thin air. He he he's real in a way, mm-hmm. but of what he, he's just the mind stone energy, like and and memories and and chewing gum. Like, <laughs> how do you... she MacGyvered his ass together? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Magruder. <laughs> I don't know. And more um, like Magruder because it's going to fall apart terribly. <laughs> we have a... It's just going to definitely end in explosions. <laughs> oh, no. We have a couple a couple of themes left. Um, one major theme of mothers and motherhood throughout this mm. episode. In the beginning, we saw with Agatha's own mom trying to kill her for various reasons. Yeah, I mean, and for it, reasons. And it ends up being no, various. I'm sure there's more. It's we Agatha need that we're talking about. <laughs> and then Agatha ends up killing her mother. Wanda's own mother dying due to the bombing. That Brady Bunch scene when Wanda was in the isolation room where that little girl said, what was her name? The Brady girl? She says she's Cindy. trying to... Cindy. Cindy Brady. She says she's trying to put her baby doll to sleep. Um, Wanda's kids, Billy and Tommy, constantly being used as motivators. As a mother, you know, you are always going to fight for your kids. You're going to do whatever it takes for your kids. And um, so if some, something happens to them or, or they're in danger, you're going to make moves and make sure they're safe. And also, as I, as I was talking before, technically, if you want to look at it this way, Wanda birth vision as well as Tommy and Billy. And even when she's creating vision, it kind of looks like she's in a form of labor. Which <laughs> a is, matrix labor. Matrix labor. <laughs> Which is Lean back. So. <laughs> Lean back. <laughs> For real. And our last theme of the episode is dreams versus reality. Mm. We have confirmed over and over again. And now you have your just another tidbit to express that. All the episodes and commercials of WandaVision and the Hex were born from fragments. It was born from a mixture of things. Fragments of memories, dreams. Uh, wants and needs, things like that. It, it, it's a lot of different things, but it's all born from Wanda's essence and the Mind Stone Still or the Valley Stone. Sh- Which one is it? Uh, that was Wanda. She stone. she got all the powers of all the stones, so I think that's yeah. kind of uh, irrelevant at this point. But I still am not sure who is creating the commercials. You, you know what I mean? Somebody, somebody else creating commercials? Yes, the commercials. They were, they were kind of. I think maybe because they were kind of. Um, Forcing not her to negative, stay in. And not even negative. It's more about how they were like, for the most part, until we got to the shark one, they were about keeping her in this reality, forgetting her troubles, making her past deeds seem like just something she could wipe away with Legos clean up, you know, or whatever. Yeah, I, I thought all, the commercials yeah. were also a little bit ag- antagonistic. That too. And they, they get more and more with it. But they're also like antagonistic, but also like forget your troubles, you know? Yeah. Concentrate on this. You've got this now. Everything else doesn't matter. You've got the hex. That's yeah. what the commercials were more about, which goes back to this thing that we keep saying. And I think that's you know even more clear in this episode. Wanda wanted vision back. The kids come from people forcing her to have these kids. The motherhood comes later. Mm-hmm. The vision back, you know, is what she wanted. The kids, hell spawn. Yeah. The idea of. <laughs> dreams of, of, of this has been going on the internet since the beginning of the series but the mm-hmm. idea that this is all a dream and that concept of dreams and and being in a dreamscape has been prevalent from the beginning i i mentioned earlier about the the idea of wizard of oz being and it's all through the every episode almost but that idea of the wizard of oz and the idea that this is something that she's just dreaming up and it's just real and that episode that the family is watching um, is the Dick Van Dyke episode titled It May Look Like a Walnut. And mm-hmm. in that episode, it's all about Dick Van Dyke, the main character, whatever his name was. He's dreaming this very elaborate nightmare mm-hmm. uh, involving walnuts and everyone around him seems to be gaslighting him, <laughs> which is a, 
in ways indicative of what Wanda is going through. Yep. And the the specific the, more specifically, um, Dick Van Dyke's character name is Rob, and he he enjoys he's watching a, a televised sci fi movie with his wife Laura in bed, and and then the next day, which we reveal later to be a dream, but the next day, as he's thinking about that, the details of the movie, everyone seems to be doing these wild, weird shit that like like. His wife just keeps giving him walnuts for breakfast and giving walnuts to eat, and there's walnuts coming out the door, and everyone's acting like everything's cool, but it's but but what's happening is some aliens have taken over Earth. Mm. Um, and there was a line that Dick Van Dyke said, and if you have your closed caption on, you can see this. Dick Van Dyke says, "I dreamed I was a Twilo, uh, and some 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 other stuff." And he he says two times, "What a nightmare," which is really good mirror to where you see Wanda Pietro hiding under the bed because. Wanda herself, she's trying to reassure herself that everything's going to be okay as a kid. She goes, by the end of the, by the, end of the episode, you realize it was all a bad dream. Mm-hmm. And these, these thoughts about dreams and nightmares and all this, is this another nightmare reference? We talked about the character Nightmare from Marvel before. Mm-hmm. And yeah, the character Nightmare from Marvel is a character who basically is like their version of Freddy Krueger. He rules the dream dimension and he influences nightmares and lives off the fear, et cetera, that comes from these things. So we'll get into him and once again in our whole big bad section towards the end of this. But what's also interesting about this Dick Van Dyke uh, episode is that not only does it involve dreams, but it also involves aliens, which keep coming up in really small ways. Like there's, you know, this obsession with flying saucers in this show. There's, yeah, we see uh, it on the newspaper. We see the flying saucers on the newspaper. We hear Wanda talk about it from the jump, and then she made some flying saucers, you know, saucer plates float. So we keep seeing stuff about aliens, and people are thinking that's because of Captain Marvel and Monica's role in it. And I don't know. I, I really feel like this next episode, as the last episode, as much as it's going to give us a really good answer, I think it's going to ask a lot more questions. And hopefully people aren't too upset about that. That's what I said last week. I, I said, know. Y- y'all yeah. gonna get a l- <laughs> there's gonna be more questions than answers, yeah. which is if, which is fine. Yeah. Just don't be surprised if a lot of stuff is left open, and mm-hmm. and also simply because we're not even a quarter of a way through this entire arc of the MCU right yep. now. Like we're just starting. Yeah, it's just I think because people are seeing so much more, and then there's a lot of new people, and I think they've already you know ready for that. I know they're going to give you an emotional end to Wanda's story in this next episode. Don't worry about that part. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, the Wanda and Vision, we are going to get some type of closure. Yeah. And the yeah. episodes have started to get longer. I know this one was like about 45, 46 mm-hmm. minutes or so. So um, I think the next one should be like an hour, hour and a half. Yeah. yeah okay. I think we're going to go for like an hour and a half next time. All right. Um, Agatha mentions, when we're talking about dreams and reality, Agatha mentions that she's been trying to be gentle with Wanda and quote unquote wake her. Mm-hmm. From this this Westview reality, so uh, yes, that's that's uh, obvious direct, uh, directly uh, involved with the idea of dreams. But also, does this mean that Agatha was purposely being weird in those scenes to try to make Wanda realize everything was made up? Or that's the thing about Agatha; she's so good at being duplicitous. Like I, I'm mm-hmm. not sure what she's getting at. Is she saying, "Oh, she really was trying to wake Wanda up"? Because again, all all Agatha's about is trying to get this, understand how Wanda did this and trying to get yes. the powers. But it seems like Agatha's also trying to keep her in the dreamscape. So which one is it? Is it Uchi Wally is the one, Mike? Is she trying to keep her in or is she trying to wake her up? I think it's a bit of both. Like we said before, remember, I think she is still definitely afraid of Wanda. Okay. Because she is still worried. Because she doesn't know how she's doing all these things, she's thinking that this woman is an ultra-powerful witch who could wipe her out, maybe. Or maybe Agatha has now taken on the role of her mother's thing where she's like a Doctor Strange, you know, checking out when magic is getting too out of control. Maybe she's learned her lesson in the hundreds of years. And now Agatha, she's like... She strikes me as the damn. person that doesn't learn her lesson. God damn! <laughs> she strikes Agatha strikes me as the person who she feels like she got it like that. And it's she been 300 is years. 400 probably at this point. But Agatha... <laughs> <laughs> strikes me as the person who believes she's the OG mm-hmm. and she is your OG and mm-hmm. you you that you can't be above her. So mm. I, Well, just... you know, yeah, is it Uchi Wally now? <laughs> <It's one mic. laughs> I don't know because, you know. <laughs> uh and, and the last note about dreams versus reality, you want to talk about this, Ben I mean? About this plot of land oh. that, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that uh Wanda shows up to. All right, right. 
First of all, we see Westview, this town, is decrepit. It is on its way down. It is straight up looking like Walter White been straight through that town, serving up white everywhere because, you know, <laughs> serving happened. up that Heisenberg, that blue. <laughs> yeah, I mean, straight up, it looks like, you know, meth has hit this town hard. Oh and it also God. looks like, <laughs> it also looks like most small towns in America now where the past, those glory days have moved on. Usually the industry in the town has changed. The factories close up. People are out of work. People are looking for jobs. We see all this as she's driving through the town. We see our man Herb looking stressed, angry. He does um, stressed. What's your man's name? Uh, Phil. Yeah, Phil Jones. Phil. Dottie's husband up there putting a piano lessons because normally he's like a concert pianist or some type of stuff. Could we see yeah. him playing the piano before? You know, he got work. Uh, Mrs. Hart sitting out there with no Mr. Hart looking stressed in the middle of the day at the coffee shop, not smiling. Everybody in it's angry. There's a big billboard in the background that says fresh and this town is far from it so i just love that (laughs) (laughs) and you mentioned the pool yeah the pool is looking i mean just dusted and disgusted she drives past it pulls into this looks neglected let's say that like i said i i I, I don't know about hitting the town (laughs) the town looks the town looks neglected and to me that's that's indicative of the the idea of of a couple of things yeah (laughs) not meth it's indicative of yeah, a, a lot of a lot. small a lot of small towns in America look like that really, but also the snap happened. So mm-hmm. half the people were gone to begin with, and it's already a small population of people. Yep. So what was like I forgot what the population was, but it's a low number. So imagine if half them niggas was gone, like shit's gonna get a little run down. I guarantee the drug dealers weren't in that half. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so Wanda drives up to this empty lot and. She's got this letter, this deed that says uh, to Wanda Matsumov and D-Vision. I love that. That was like mm-hmm. D-Vision, you know? But this is the question right here. Okay. We've seen that Wanda and Vision, right before they were attacked in Infinity War, were trying to make it solid. You know, Vision is like, yo, we've been playing around for the last year, so let's take a chance at this. Right? Oh, so the, for, for real. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he was trying to put the cuffs on. You know, you don't put a ring on it, all that. You know, he'd be a good man. So the vision just believed that his game was that tight and he'd already bought this plot of land. And he was like, yo, I got this in the bag, homie. I'm going to buy this plot of land. Westview is popping right now. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Town's on the come up. You know what I mean? And then, and then the snap happens. You know, obviously he gets murked out, all that. Wanda. <laughs> Waits up five years later, gets this deed, and it's like drives down to this beat up town that's been snapped out, meffed out, and it's all bad, right? Yeah. Or because all right, there's the other side. Now remember, in this deed, it's right next to Agatha's crib, right, right next mm-hmm. door. Agatha, a witch. You know, there's something going on in this town, right? Also, we know that there is something about Westview, right? Remember, we let's go back to that missing person, Jimmy Jimmy Woo's missing person. There's something going on in this location, you know, real mm-hmm. estate location, 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 right? Mm-hmm. Something matters about this spot. So, did someone else forge this whole thing? You know, the whole oh, this is somewhere to grow old and send it to her, and yet Wanda to go to this spot in this mm-hmm. town. To start it up. Those yeah. are the two things. Because it seems weird to me that Vision would buy this five years ago. Maybe my man's game. You know, he's a computer. He's just thinking ahead. He like, Shh, logically, I got this. Let me go get the crib. You know, who knows? But I don't know. Yeah. That seems a little weird. So only, I think all- somebody, you know, is goading her once again to get to this spot. That's definitely a huge potential. The, the mm-hmm. only contrary point I have is mm-hmm. about Agatha. Because... As far as I, as far as it seems, Agatha had no idea about Wanda and that until the hex happened, and that's and Wanda mm. Agatha says mm-hmm. that hex energy is what drew her mm. to Wanda, and she, mm. when she then she saw what was happening, all the all the different spells happening, being cast at once, and that's what made her want to be a part of it. So I think it wasn't until the hex created that Agatha wanted to infiltrate. So Agatha comes in there, get, buys the house next door, sets up shop in the buys basement. It? She's a witch. She just okay, whatever. However, she, she gets just it, you know. Walks up in that bitch, and it's her house now. <laughs> Boom. Which is yeah, which is up the house. But also remember, Agatha has said that like mind control and things like that. She can do it, but on the level that Wanda is doing, Wanda it, did it already. My thing is, Wanda created this, and that's another th- question. 
how did it if for example if it was that wanda did this hex shit that is what alerted you know the little explanation point came over agatha's mm-hmm. head and said oh magic <laughs> i want sims. your magic so she, she got sh- the sims joint. right so she, so she showed up right so she showed up to investigate and infiltrate how did she get into the hex the, she, that's what i'm she saying also that powerful or was yeah. she, as you say was she already planted there to begin with yeah, based and on that's what how... agatha's saying she came after the fact and but that's what I'm saying because it's it's been shown that when people come into the heads immediately, Wanda knows what's up. You know, it's like now nah, you don't just walk up in here, especially another witch, another person who's emanating this much. Well, she power. doesn't necessarily know immediately because remember when when several people the the it wasn't really until she saw them. Like True. That. Because when the sword agent came through, like he if he wasn't he if he if he didn't come through in the middle of the street, he probably would have got around a little mm. bit. When Monica first came in, like, yeah, she just been indoctrinated and turned into that that, you know, black exploitation version of her, but mm-hmm. she wasn't derided as, you know, like like, you know, it was like a white blood soul moment. It wasn't like, oh, here's mm-hmm. a, a foreign entity, let's go kill it. Like yep. they just it just it just assimilated and was part of the scene. So is it that because Agatha's that powerful, she can walk in, feel like, okay, this is going on here. Everybody's mind controlled. Let me, you know, start doing my acting bit change my clothes to the 50s and go along with this? Maybe that. And How did also, she know the script? Also, also, you can play along with it. But also, I think that... Now, notice, and this is a question we had with each other. How, like, what is Agatha's house? Like, it, to me, it could be mm-hmm. a portal, right? Because when we, we all know that when, by looking at that scene, when Wanda walks through that door with all the vines on it to walk into Agatha's lair... The ratio, the aspect ratio changes, which means you're no longer in the fake Wanda world. You're in, yep. you're in, I don't know where you are, but you're someplace else. So to me, that could be, potentially be a portable portal to a new place. We know that that room that Agatha stays in has uh, incantations on it to protect other witches, to protect herself from other witches and other mm-hmm. spells. If someone crosses that threshold, they can no longer use their powers because she. Agatha has has wards. protected herself. Her wards has protected herself and her runes. So that could, to me, if if Agatha's telling the truth that she came after the fact, maybe she became, she tunneled her. This could be underground. Who the fuck knows? Because she 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 somehow portaled herself in there mm-hmm. and has this place to protect her where she can still be herself. Mm. She's not completely taken over. A lot of speculation, y'all. But this is just something we were talking about. Yep. And I'm going to go with that. Remember, Agatha's mind to Billy is blank. So she's not. And so that well, that's also, because she no one can read her. She doesn't allow others to read her mind. She doesn't she allow her, same as, as she said. And so she's not allowing her mind to be controlled either, unlike the other people in the right. town. Which is why I'm like, you can, if you are trying to infiltrate and you're smart like Agatha, who's been around for 400 plus years, which means yeah. she's seen those TV shows too. She knows you've seen culture. She can play right into it. And also, I would think that Agatha probably hears whatever script is being told to the other people. You know, like, she hears, like, you should be saying this right now. You know, and she's probably like, nah, okay, if I want to, I do. If not, I'll do what I want. You know, but that's, like, uh, other people are hearing, you know, they're feeling this energy like Norm, um, yeah, Norm said, you know, it hurts, you know, and all that type of stuff. Yeah. So, it's being fed to them, you know, this script. And like Agatha says in this episode, it's complex mind control with all these different people going along with a script. So Agatha is probably hearing or feeling this energy in the air and is like, nah, I'm good with that. Okay, I need to use that information, this and that, you know. Do, do. Maybe she's seen, you know, maybe she got a preview of this episode. <laughs> she got them screeners. I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. She went right. to Oleg and got her screeners ahead of time. <laughs> Not Oleg. <laughs> <laughs> uh, My man let's... got the bootlegs. That's the end of the theme. Wait, is his name Oleg for real? His name is Oleg. Oh my God, Oleg with the bootleggers. Oleg with the bootleggers. Son, yo, you know he was caking. That's a new AKA. With a name like that, my man was caking, son. Oleg (laughs) with the bootlegs, like he is known in the streets. His name is ringing out. Well, we still while we're talking about street names, let's talk about all these characters then, Uh, and not all of them, but just just some of the new some of the new information that we've learned. Also, and also some of the new characters Uh, besides Oleg with the bootlegs. (laughs) That's a great AKA. My man's name reads Bells. <laughs> we also have the introduction of Evanora Harkness, which mm. is the name of Agatha's mother, who made her stand trial for or dark magic use and try to kill her. Uh, <laughs> funny enough. <laughs> kill, kill her. 
In the 2013 Disney film Oz the Great and Powerful, Evan Nora is the name of the Wicked Witch of the East. Mm. What the fuck did I keep telling y'all about witches and mm-hmm. Wizard of Oz and all that stuff? And obviously that brings up the, uh, the understanding of magic and witches and covens and, and all of that and Marvel's explanation for how ma- magic works. Yes. And this was the 1693, right, is where the Salem witch trials happen, et cetera, et cetera. And like you said, it's the Salem 7, perhaps, maybe 8. You know? Well, if you count Agatha's mother, then there was eight witches. I thought it was there. nine, but I'll throw it, you know, nine I was hoping it was Agatha. seven. Okay, I was hoping well, I was, it was no, seven. No, I counted. It, it was, yeah yeah. yeah. yeah, Okay, I was hoping it was seven. So, all right, Uh-oh. Salem seven. There we go. When uh, it comes to Agatha, mm-hmm. I, I, once again, uh, uh, Catherine Hahn is a freaking G. Mm. She's incredible, incredible actor. I, I love her. She loves her role. She really understands what to do when it comes to the characterization of Agatha. Mm-hmm. Uh, we learned what we learned from this episode is that she was drawn to the hex, as she says, mm-hmm. based on the power of all the different spells she sensed. She talked about like she was going through the 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 list of all the of the spells she thought uh, Wanda was doing. And again, it looks like Wanda is just doing this. Like she's not formally doing any Latin incantations of all this stuff. It's just happening. Mm-hmm. So Wanda, uh, Agnes mentions, Agnes slash Agatha mentions mind control, transmutation. She uses the locust to show this example. Uh, and she also says the phrase magic on autopilot. Mm-hmm. Because she's saying that Wanda is operating on that level of magic on autopilot, like some other level that she cannot imagine. And like, once again, she's just like, how did you do all this? But you didn't even recognize these wards when you walked in here. Yeah. And it also means... If what Agatha's saying is true, it also means she didn't make Wanda create the hex like a lot Mm-mm. of people thought. Like we thought. Well, I thought that she was doing. Uh, I, my, I didn't think she made her create the hex. I just thought she was actively involved her in, in there. The creation but now of the she's hex, giving yeah. me different vibes. Yeah, and I and now I think. I will get into that because I still don't. It's like I, I still think that she wanted Wanda to have these kids, but. At this point, it doesn't like she doesn't really seem to care about the kids as much as she, she don't wants like to... kids. She makes it very plain that she don't like them kids. She talks about eating and biting kids. She, when mm-hmm. when when baby when little Pietro's out there yelling, talking about mom, mm-hmm. uh, she's like she's like ugh. Like yeah. her, all her reactions to children are very standoffish. Mm. So, but she still seems her main goal in this episode, at least, is to find out, you know, how Scarlet Witch is doing all this, how Wanda is doing all this, if she is the Scarlet Witch, you know. Which, which leads me to understand that Agatha's whole character is that she's on a quest for power. Mm-hmm. She's an overachiever. She's she she her mother when they would uh, had her on trial said you were using powers beyond your station and beyond your title. I mean, you. you, you you're doing too much because she can, though. Like, she mm-hmm. has that ability to. She has the smarts and the understanding. She's obsessed, as you said, with figuring out how Wanda created this hex and how she's been, how she's controlling thousands of people at once, just automatically. Mm-hmm. She even chides Wanda for not knowing the fundamentals of witchcraft. When she explains to her, how did you not know about runes and you didn't realize when you crossed that threshold that you was going to be able to use your powers? Mm-hmm. So, she, to me, she doesn't think Wanda's necessarily worthy of that power and even jealous of Wanda. Yep. We have the confirmation that her thoughts cannot be read, whether it's because she's a witch or because she's she has some type of spell going on. That explains with why Billy says she was quiet inside. Also explains why she was technically outside of all of Wanda's powers this entire time, and why mm-hmm. she was always acting so weird. Because she could, she had the ability to move on her own cognition, uh, uh, reconnaissance. Yep. Uh, when the when Agatha kills her mother, she steals her mother's brooch. Mm. And what does the brooch represent then? All right, well, we've got a few theories, and we've had a few of these uh, since the start. We talked about how it could rep- it most probably represents uh, or all of these things at once, yes. which is like the fates, uh, the ideas of three women who are looking into the future, three old crones, etc. But also, which the fates represent this idea is there's an idea that goes back in you know a lot of different. A lot of different mythologies. Yeah, Greek mythologies. mythology is, is really prevalent there. Yes, is the triple goddess. And the triple goddess is a deity or archetype that's in many religions. And it usually represents a maiden, a mother, and a crone. Each one of which symbolizes both a separate stage in the life of the triple goddess. The triple goddess is three in one. Mm-hmm. And 
also they're the rulers of the heavens, the earth, and the underworld mm-hmm. in that order. The you know the maiden is the ruler of the heavens, mother ruler of the mm-hmm. earth, and then prone in the underworld. Mm-hmm. And then in various forms of Wicca, the religion or the practice of witchcraft or some witchcraft that is mm-hmm. her masculine consort is the horned god the which devil. the devil mephisto etc and some people are saying that uh ralph this husband who like you talked about earlier wanda likes to eat kids i mean agatha likes to eat kids agatha also is trying to be nice about breaking wanda out of this thing uh ralph says that Aunt agatha sugarcoats everything so that Ralph is probably much more evil or much more leaning towards the dark side than Agatha is. And Ralph, I mean, Agatha talks to her bunny, um, Sir Scratchy, Senior Scratchy. Uh, Senior yeah. Scratchy. Yeah, Senior Scratchy in this episode. And she says something about like us in our true forms when she's talking to him. Mm. So is she talking, is that her husband? She feeds uh, the she's- rabbit a bunny too. She I mean, feeds the, the bun, no, she feeds the no after she turns the locust into a bird. Yeah, whatever. She feeds it yeah. to him. Yeah, and you know, bunnies are not eating birds. <laughs> like it might eat a locust when it's starving, but damn, wow. a bird it ain't doing. Bunnies are vicious though, so don't sleep on them. They might eat a bird too. Yeah. Bunnies the, are vicious little things. The other thing I thought about, because like you said, it could this it could be all of them about mm-hmm. the, the triple goddess and the yep. fates. Is um when Agatha is holding the kids back, mm-hmm. um you you have a note here that she's holding the kids like Master Pandemonium. Who's that? Master Pandemonium. We've talked about him before in the episodes. Master Pandemonium is a servant of the Horn God Mephisto, and he is involved in a crucial Scarlet Witch storyline when it was revealed that her kids were pieces of Mephisto's soul. And oh, Master so Pandemonium, <laughs> yeah, and Master Pandemonium thought that they were pieces of his soul. Because Mephisto had taken his soul and split it into five pieces. Because Mephisto okay. was like, I'm tired of just any one soul. Let me do something fun with yours. And, you know, tore it into five pieces. And was like, if you could find them, you can have your soul back. Right. So and he was always did, searching for a soul. And you said Agatha's holding the kids like he did with what? Yeah, that's about to get it to. So once, he get, <laughs> once we find out that uh, William and Tommy are not real and are just pieces of... At in the, the time, comics. Master, in the comics we're talking about. In the about. comics. Yes, in the comics. Yeah. Uh, Master Pandemonium thought that they were pieces of his soul, so he absorbed them into his body, okay. and there's a gross, terrible image, which I posted on Fallen Nerd's Instagram, and I will spare y'all from posting again, where Master Pandemonium, the villain, is standing up with his hands in the air like this, and both of his hands are Tommy and William. Oh! Yeah. So, this is the best we're going to see of that, I think, is oh Agatha... God. Holding these kids by the strings like they are little puppets instead of them actually being puppet hands, which is what they were in that. And and I thought yeah. of her pulling the strings is reminiscent of the fates because mm-hmm. at least in Greek mythology, the fates they 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 work on the tapestry of of life and death, yep. and everyone in the world has a string that they run to. Have you ever seen the the Disney cartoon Hercules? You, you saw this actual scene mm-hmm. with them. They, they, they show Hercules his string and where it leads to, where it came from. And then if they cut the string, you die. Mm. So, you it, ever seen uh, Donnie Darko? Uh, pieces of it, not the whole thing. Okay, well, piece, people who've seen all of Donnie Darko, they actually do a visual representation of that same thing with real people. Oh, shit. Yeah, okay. and, they're, <laughs> and they're like, they're a tube of energy that leads them through life. That makes us move on to director Tyler Wayward Hayward. Who is this nigga? Really? I mean, besides, a tube of energy goes so, all over. Besides the fact that we don't trust him, um, he, and we said this already just about the fact that he, it seems like he's the one who's been inceptioning Wanda this whole time mm-hmm. and the fact that he don't, he don't respect Vision as a being. He, he, he sees Vision as a weapon. Yep. And, but like we say, it's, it could be two things. Hayward could be Mephisto, right? He could be the ultimate bid bad who is trying to incept all of this to start it all off. Do this, do that. Oh, that don't work. Then you'll go to Westview. You know, maybe he's got big plans. Or he could just be a stressed out homie. You know, like he could just be this dude who is put into an impossible situation of protecting the world after half of the people had been snapped away. After half mm-hmm. of the universe had been snapped mm-hmm. away. And most of the heroes and the ones who were left, like Captain Marvel, bounce. You know, like the most powerful one you have bounces. It doesn't even really protect the Earth for five years. 
So, you know, you are stressed and you got to do whatever you can do. And that might just be Hayward. And he might, I mean, sure, we all love to hate him. But, you know, like I say, if we was chilling at the crib and, you know, the next Stano shows up, you're going to be like, damn, Hayward, you know, why didn't you do something? You know, come you ain't going to be. Come Hayward, come scoop me. Help yeah, me. <laughs> please send me, Hayward. You know, then it's going to be a whole different story. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, mm-hmm. don't be mad. You know, that that's all I'm saying. I've seen a lot of slander towards my man, Hayward. You know, oh, that's your man's now. OK, I mean, I'm just saying, I mean, my man's is grimy. Don't get me wrong. You know, he's falling into the, you know, Jamie Lannister category right now. You know, oh, we all know but no, no, much, I mean, no, 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 no. Jamie's Jamie. a hero and and, and amazing. Uh, we're yeah. not going to get we're not going to backslide <laughs> to Castle Black Days and your foolishness. We're not. Yeah, doing but I'm that. just saying, Hayward, I don't I, I think he's grimy. No, he's not a good person, but I do understand and I don't think that, you know, like, like I say, if you were you sitting in the crib. Evil. You just think yeah, this is just the he way just, he's, he's doing He's doing what things. he got to do. You know what I mean? Like, shit, these motherfuckers, <sighs> they, like, these motherfuckers just fucked up and let half of the universe just snapped off because this guy didn't want to chop somebody's head off. You know, you got to think about that. Like, because this asshole wanted to be, you know, big and bad about it. You know, like, half of the universe is drawn. I'm going to do whatever and fuck these guys after that. I'm never trusting them to make it right again. You know, and he's got full reason. Well, that's how sword like shield did the same thing. Yeah. She was like, well, we got to do this shit ourselves. And I, see, we love Nick Fury because he's black. That's all I'm telling you. If, if, <laughs> if, if Hayward was black, we would all be like, yes. No, I'd be like, he's the dickhead. Still. Yeah. Yes, you Still. would be. But you wouldn't be like, you know, we wouldn't be like, oh, he he talking down to the black woman at all. I mean, yes, we would, but yeah. Yes, yes, we would. Yeah. No, I, my, my feelings don't change towards Haywood. Haywood right? would have to be like, um, what's his name? That that you know who would be perfect for playing Haywood? Um Ricky from uh Boys in the Hood. What uh Morris Chestnut. Morris Chestnut can play an asshole. We're, we're getting no, with that, we're moving <laughs> off this character. Absolutely not, man. I mean, how dare you? Never you know he can play an asshole. Well, I'm not doing it. We're not doing it. <laughs> He'd no, you are not the casting director. He'd be so good. Oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> Yo, finish? No. You, that's why no. you're mad because you know he'd be good. <laughs> no. no. Let's let's get through the remaining. He'd be like, damn, he looks good while he's such an asshole. <laughs> the, the, the remaining characters. Um <laughs> we have we have fake Pietro, <laughs> aka Fietro. <laughs> Confirmation from Agatha that she didn't create him. But nope. she more or less possessed him. Now, still, the question still remains, does that mean from another universe? Or he's mm-hmm. just some random that looks like Evan Peters, <laughs> a.k.a. Quicksilver from the Fox universe? Like, what are you trying to do here? Um, Agatha says that Fietro is her eyes and ears, which would explain his strange behavior and all the fucked up things he said. Because remember, Ben, I mean, you always pointed out how his the stuff he would say to Juan and the stuff he would say with General mm-hmm. was real suspect. Yep. And, it, and as you see the way... Agatha speaks, it's very aligned with her type of speech and, and the mm-hmm. way she thinks. Um, and also explains why he kept motivating the kids to use their powers. Mm-hmm. If you're going along the lines, which you said, Ben, that Agatha is like really just about those kids being, uh, those kids even uh, being um, existing in the first place and mm-hmm. to see what, how far they can, she can go with them. Um, and potentially taking their magic too because she has them mm-hmm. both. So she may want to absorb them. Mm-hmm. Who knows? Um, but, we, and, you know, and, and this is something I had said, like, you know, I didn't think he was just, he, he wasn't just created. I mean, you can't create out of thin air, but he wasn't created mm-hmm. out of thin air. Like, you know, he, he was manipulated. Yep. Um, but then that begs the, the question, if, if that's her eyes and ears, is he still under Agatha's control? Is he still possessed? And if not, how is he then going to help Monica? Because you saw in the mid credits of the episode seven that he, he, he catches Monica looking into the basement and says, oh, Snooper's going to snoop. Yes. But is he saying that we're both snoopers going to snoop, which is what I think he's saying right there. Oh, like they're both snooping around. So. Yeah, that's what I think he's saying. Because like you said, I don't think he's any possessed anymore. Because Agatha has said that she can't do all the stuff that Wanda's doing. She right. can't keep multiple people possessed right. and keep all that. So I think he's free of it. And also his voice seemed back to the normal dickhead and not that <laughs> Jersey boy voice. You know, so I think, yeah, mm-hmm. I think he's no longer possessed and it's back to his dickhead. Speaking of voice, maybe not L- quits over, maybe not, maybe. Speaking of voice, oh, L- lol again to Agatha, who 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 comes at Wanda again, talking about her accent, talking about it just comes and goes when it feels <laughs> like it. 
I get. I, I, I'm just trying to understand. Is that just the writing? Because they knew in yeah. Ultron, her her accent was coming and going. They trying to be funny or. And also, what? like I, I have like I think it is coming and going, but it is like where it's gradually leaving her. You know, like and also Elizabeth had a little trouble with it. You know, at times. You know? <laughs> where are my children? That was oh my god, yeah. Yeah, Ron yeah, is, yeah. yeah just a yeah. fucking monster. We also have Vision oh, talking about voice. Vision, the gray vision or the white vision, or he could be cataracts. Mm -hmm. We we saw a few episodes before where Darcy found that secret file for a weapon called cataract. Yes. And perhaps this could be it. So as we know, S.W.O.R.D. had Vision's body this whole time. For years, they've been putting it together, putting it back, uh, disassembling and reassembling. But the issue is they could never activate him. They didn't have enough power or the right types of powers. But what they did, as Ben Amin skillfully uh, realized, was that they that, that drone that Wanda shot down that was still imbued with her power, they used it to power this version of Vision. And again, this is from uh, the comics, mm -hmm. or at least inspired from the comics. Yes. Uh, the Great Vision itself. Do you want to mention that? Oh, yeah, definitely. West Coast Avengers 42. We mentioned this before, where uh, a group of, like, it was a bunch of governments, worldwide government agencies came together uh, kidnapped Vision and disassembled him because before Vision had tried to take over the world by infiltrating the computer systems of every major country in the world. So they were like, nah, B, that's not happening again. Disassembled his ass. Hank Pym puts him back together, but when he puts him back together, because of the damage done to his skin and stuff, he's white. Now, the interesting thing about this is, like, once again, this is John Byrne, this artist doing this. But when you go back to the creation of Vision, he was originally intended to be white. But because mm. of color processes at the time, the white on the paper just made him look blank. So they're oh. like, okay, he's got to be red. We need something. Oh, we need some color because it's not printing right. Mm -hmm. And oh. so John Byrne, when you know later on they could do the printing like that, he went back and made him white because he's vision. You know, he's supposed to be this ethereal, scary being. You know, he can float through things like a ghost, you know, all that. So he's supposed to be a vision of fear. So now they went back to white. And when so when he's recreated in the comic books, He's white, and he has lost that emotional memory of everything. Like, he remembers everything. He has memories of his relationship yeah, with Wanda. They, they load has, him up with the memories, but he's yes, not. He has no emotional connection to them. The same, yeah. Which is a whole longer story because he doesn't have uh, this guy, Simon Williams, emotional brain patterns, Wonder Man's attached to him, which is completely different from the version that we've seen in MCU, so don't worry about that. What does matter is that he is white now, which is also, like you said, cataract which is when a white film goes over your vision, over your eyes. So mm -hmm. it was right there all along that the white the, vision. The antithesis of vision. Yes. But well, let me just, you know, throw it up real quick because all drones matter. Big <laughs> up to the drone. It's the return of the drone. I told y'all the drone matter. <laughs> you I, you I, said this. I, I, I mean, said I just, this. I was like, yo, there's the, if, if Marvel don't give me a six episode drone miniseries, I'm going to be mad <laughs> because the drone, the drone. Yeah. Drone the history of the drone. The history of the drone, where the drone is growing. I need to know these things. Yeah. Because the drone has now imbued vision. But let's talk about voice. And let's hurt some people's feelings real quick before we get up out of this great vision. Oh. Oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Slight spoiler for what is coming. This is not a spoiler. I'm uh, Actually, this is a Wait, guess. Wait, is it a spoiler or is it not? No, this is a guess because I have no this idea is if this guess. is true or not. This is a educated guess, okay. right? Based on evidence that we have seen. And the fact that a certain actor, I can say this because this is on IMDb, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, James Spader, the voice of Ultron, is listed in the WandaVision credits, but he has not appeared to our knowledge. We haven't heard Ultron's voice or any of that. We've heard Ultron's been mentioned once. They told you to go watch Age of Ultron because this is going to be important later. Study this now. There'll be a quiz later, right? <laughs> so... Um, James Spader's not been in it. We have a recreated vision where we see... Where the Mind Stone should be, we see what looks like the arc reactor on his head. That yeah. energy powering that triangular shape. The arc reactor, that uh, the triangle one that Tony later adopted. So uh, Vision was originally created from Jarvis, Tony, and uh, Thor's hammer as energy and Ultron, right? So, well, Jarvis, yeah, yeah Jarvis, Ultron, and Thor's hammer. So... And the Mind Stone, which has been removed now. So you remove these parts of it. And before, you know, they were saying, well, if we remove this and that, maybe we still have vision. You know, maybe we still have what matters. 
I don't think that's what we're left with with Cataract right mm -hmm. now. You're, you're removing I, his soul. I think we removed the soul. We have this soulless white thing. Sorry, y'all. It was too easy. <laughs> um, and that is going to come back with James Spader's voice. And I think we're going to have the return of Ultron in this next episode. Oh, my God. In White Vision's body. If that shit happens, I'm going to scream. I will also say that somehow I think this mind vision, you know, Wanda's mental vision is going to get into this um, Ultron body, thus saving him and Vision coming back. But uh, based on evidence we also have in Spider-Man Homecoming, there is a Vision memorial. I, you should, I'm just saw my face on the screen. <laughs> like, I was just like, there's like, ah, uh, what? Yeah. That would be wild. That would no, be wild. No, I mean, that's no, a there, great there prediction. Is, so I, I don't know if Vision's going to make it out of this because Homecoming takes place after WandaVision. Right. Well, well, we're probably going to see some version of Vision die again because <laughs> the, last, the last question is, where is he? So remember, this, this episode, seven, with the L. episode seven, he, he phases out of the, the funnel truck the funnel cake truck from Darcy and uh, presumably is going to go see Wanda, right? Mm. He was trying to find her. We don't see him at all this episode. So I presume we're going to see him in, this, in the finale. And is mm -hmm. he going to go up against gray vision, white vision, or the cataract, or whatever you want to call it? Ultron him? vision. Ultron I think so vision? because in one of the previews... One of them is dying. One or both are dying. I've not seen the latest preview for the final episode because I try not watch those. But in one of the very early previews, Wanda turns to vision... And says, this is our home. Let's fight for it. And it was in that wide angle already shot. So I think that is the final battle for Westview, which means that I, I, you know, I'm doing on the, like, I've, I've, I've been down on Wanda as a villain or as, I don't like, you know, don't cast people as villains or heroes, but as leaning, as doing what she got to do. But I think they've shown Wanda will do what she got to do and has reason behind it. So, yeah, I didn't, I don't know if this don't work out. <laughs> yeah, anyway, if, if you're looking for a happy ending, you might be watching the wrong show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's all I gotta say. Already, we've already spoken a lot about Wanda, so we're not gonna rehash a lot of that. But again, is Wanda just, a mutant? Yeah, is Wanda, is Wanda? She is a mutant. Is she a mutant? It, you know, is is this? <laughs> this is how they just sneak it in. Like this is just how they sneak it in. We was here the whole time. Uh, and, and again. <laughs> She keeps maintaining she doesn't know how she did this whole hex stuff. Mm -hmm. What is going on? That that's that's gonna be something that floats out there for a while. And finally, in the character section, we have the potential big bads. Ben, I mean, you already said the potential big bad for the finale episode is Ultron Cataracts, maybe. But who else? Uh, Ultron Cataracts is definitely going to be one of the big bads representing the side of Hayward Wayward, uh, Wayward Hayward. Uh, Mephisto, we talked about multiple times. The devil himself, the horn mm -hmm. god, blah blah. I don't know. It feels like with all these nightmare references lately that we might be moving away from Mephisto towards nightmare, but both of them could represent the same type same of thing. Person. Just yeah, just, just using different names for different um, yeah type of thing. Just a big bad regions, evil yeah. demon who's feeding on this whole town and on uh, Wanda in particular. Another one we mentioned recently who we probably should give a little more uh, props to right now is Cthulhu, who is basically Marvel's version of Cthulhu. An ancient, oh. you know, elder god, yeah, from the ocean. I just kind of made this connection today. I was like, oh, my God, that's so, like, how did I not, you know, make that effing connection? Because they're both elder gods from the ocean. In fact, Cthon is an Atlantean with Norman, I mean, not Norman, <laughs> Namor, <laughs> the Submariner, that, like, he actually oh. battles Atlantis a lot, you know, and is one of their evil gods. Oh. But then later on, Cthon creates the Darkhold, which is a book of evil spells where he writes his most evils of evil spells. So the Darkhold is what people are thinking is that book that is on Agatha's desk that in this episode, we actually see the rabbit sitting next to it and the book is open. Like the rabbit's mm -hmm. reading that joint. <laughs> so, you know, well, maybe the rabbit's rabbit Cthon. I don't know. Um, so, okay, those are, all the, those are three... All could be anyone interchangeable, pretty much to me. Yeah. You know, it, it will determine where we go in the future. But for, as far as this story, it's pretty interchangeable. Yeah. Hayward, like we discussed, probably not. You know, my man's just trying to make it happen. Uh, he's cataract, out here trying to function. Yeah, just out here trying to function. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, my man's stressed, fam. Like I feel mm -hmm. him. 
I, you I know? have no sympathy, but whatever. I know you don't, but I feel them. Like half the universe, because my man didn't want to chop somebody's head off. Like, you know, I mean, you'd be so mad too if you were him. Like, nigga, we could have just, you know. <laughs> like I said, I would do things a little bit differently. I'd be mad, yes, but I might move. I feel you. Yeah, yeah, you know, you're a black woman, you know, you're not some asshole white dude, you know, you're going to do things a lot better, but, you know, it happens. Uh, cataract, white vision, not to be bad. He just drove, well, who knows? Cause if this is old, like, if my man busts out of that shell in the next episode, it's like, surprise, niggas, y'all well, brought Ultron back. They're gonna send him in. They're gonna send him in. No, they no, they're gonna launch he, the thing. No, see, what I'm saying is he, you know, in the last shot, he's raising his hand, opening his eyes. What if yeah. he starts talking like Ultron? You're not sending Ultron in. Ultron's doing what he want to do. You know what I mean? So, that's where that goes. Hmm. Mm, all right. And what's your, what's your last prediction of the day? Agatha night? all along. We have been downplaying this woman because she's a woman, you know, and everybody I don't thinks think that's what it is. There's some big bad behind her. No, I don't think so either. I think it's more that Agatha does, in the comics, you know, isn't is always gray, and in the show has seemed pretty gray so like far. She knew, just like she could be both a bad. And, she's yeah. a gray hat. She's a gray hat. She could be on both sides of the equation. I mean, I, again, a lot of people, including myself, had no idea who Agatha was prior to yeah. this show in the first place. So yeah. I don't think it's people like disrespecting her because she's a woman like we don't necessarily know what she's capable of Mm. okay well see me knowing what she's capable of i know she's really evil i mean not evil more super powerful and always doing you know it's always trying to suss but Mm. she usually has wanda's best interests at heart you know like that's always the agatha i know i might have missed some comics but you know it's just trying to suss how she goes about things her, the, the stuff I've read throughout our our review of this series mm-hmm. about her, she she's I don't trust her. It's just one of them people. Just yeah, like, you, you're not quite an ally, but you're also not quite ally, but you're also not quite an enemy. So mm-hmm. facts. Uh, uh, very All strange. Right. Uh, there wow. were no commercials to be had in this nope. episode. However, there are a handful of Easter eggs and inspirations uh, we can mention. As I'm said at the top, we talked about Oleg bootleg Oleg suitcase. <laughs> Oleg with the bootlegs. He Oleg had bootlegs. DVDs and videos of Who's the Boss? Who's the Boss? Bewitched. I Love Lucy. Adam's Family. Malcolm in the Middle. I Dream of Jeannie. And that Dick Van Dyke DVD set in the wall, mm-hmm. which served as the basis for all the episodes within the hex. Hayward's office number is Room 101, which if you're thinking about school, that's usually where your first lesson starts. It's the beginning of, of you know, topics. It's homeroom. Mm-hmm. It's, 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 the source. Okay, I see where you're going. All right, I feel that. Okay, it's all it's so all Hayward. If, if you want to say Hayward's the source of everything, th- there you go. I do think that Hayward is definitely a source of a lot of this. Like, this yeah. is a lot of this is on him. Yeah. Yeah. When Wanda first generates the hex, we see the town changing into the 50s. Mm-hmm. On the theater marquee, it changes from Tannhauser Gate. It says mm-hmm. Tannhauser Gate put the fun in dysfunction. Mm-hmm. The number one is used instead of the letter I, yep. which is typical when places lose letters <laughs> or, you know, they fly away, but also yeah. it could mean something. Um, Tannhauser Gate is actually the name of an area in Blade Runner. Yes. It's um, from the famous ahead. speech that the uh, synthetic gives to Harrison Ford at the end of the film. And then he talks about how all the just mysteries and magic of the universe that he as a synthetic being has seen because he stood on a Tannhauser gate. I mean, not a, he's just seen shit we can't do. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And like we're just these little humans who think of this earth and he's seen all this greatness. And he's also a synthetic like vision. So Right. Yep. Synthetic being, okay. That that marquee changes once Wanda's magic passes over. It changes to two r- movies, one titled Big Red, mm-hmm. which is a euphemism for Vision, and yep. Kidnapped, which who yeah. the kids were kidnapped, Vision was kidnapped, everybody. technically everybody was kidnapped, <laughs> yeah. the, the whole town. Yeah. Um, built the billboard. There's a billboard that mm-hmm. has a Lagos paper towel ad with the line "Make cleaning up a snap." Uh, Cold blooded. Call bad to the snap. Mm-hmm. And also just a kind of glazing over the fact that Wanda killed all those people accidentally, but you killed them. Uh, and also that Westview Dairy sign, as we said before, that, that milk is always a major factor <laughs> for some milk. Milk, they keep focusing in on the milk a lot, which just reminds me of Bova, which you, which Ben, I mean, explained in the comics that is an anthropomorphic cow that actually raised Wanda and Pietro when they were babies. Wild as shit, we know, but it's in the comic show. I'm so glad that you got to explain that that this time. I didn't have to. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Jesus. Uh, <laughs> you're, you're welcome. It's so it's wild and it's, it's so glad I got to explain that one this time. 
It's there. We just want y'all to know. Both for both for baby. So this that just could just be a, a, a in joke for the writers, just in terms I mean, of the whole to. dairy and milk stuff. I'm, but I'm, I'm also mad that they have not found a way to bring a cow headed person into know. this. Like, like even if somebody dead, wearing a cow dead, mask, seeing magic and shit now. Why do I want to see now a walking talking cow? Because it'd be so great. No, no, it's a, it's a lot to take in already. <laughs> oh my god no like she was like let me care for you like, oh no 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 we're Ain't not ready for that right that, now i'd be fucking so scared we already have talking trees and raccoons in yeah, the galaxy i'm good right here oh, oh god i'd be so frightened rounding out the easter eggs and inspirations when wanda leaves the house when she confronts agatha in the street as agatha holds her kids hostage when Wanda's running out the door as you know she realizes that she's on a set of some sort mm-hmm. like a tv set there's a sign on the wall that says silence while the red lights are on, which reminded me of when her and Pietro were stuck with that bomb and, you know, they were probably scared into silence. Like what's mm-hmm. going on? They were there for two days. Um, also, you can if you talk about red, the color of red and Wanda's powers. She essentially makes everybody silent because she, she has them walking, running a script. Mm-hmm. So their true thoughts and, and, and voices are not being heard. And there's another sign that says others are counting on you. Mm. Could mean a variety of things. Specifically, could mean all the people in the town. Could mean her children are counting her. Could, could mean everything. The Avengers, anybody you want to make that about. There's also the numbers on one of the lights in the studio, uh, 2013, which uh, would be when this part of WandaVision would take place, would be around 2013. Really? Mm-hmm. Yep. I thought WandaVision was taking place in 2023. No, but the actual, that last show would be 10 years ago. Remember her oh, last, like... Oh, the show like, itself. Yeah, oh, okay, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, the Welcome in the Middle show. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yep. Oh, oh okay. Mm-hmm. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Uh, this The last part you said, uh, Agatha... Agatha, with yeah. the great line, tells Wanda that she's making breakfast for dinner, which call, which is also just an insult because it's like, all you can do for, you know, you're supposed to have a full meal for dinner, and you over here, you know, throwing together an omelet or whatever. But... It also calls back to the first episode when Wanda actually does make breakfast for dinner when oh, her, yeah. you know, and there were so many little callbacks. We didn't mention this one, but uh, Wanda's mom hides her eyes in that flashback, just like Wanda did to Mrs. Hart. And when she said this is a Sokovian greeting. Oh, she sure did. Good catch. These fucking writers, yo. That writer's room was like, they were like, we going to. These details, you know? they were on all the hex gummies. Y'all gonna get like, these we was like, details. We on these details. Oh, speaking of details, when there's dissecting vision underneath his chin, there's uh hexagonal shapes. The the depth. We and again, are not we, we do recognize that there's some things where you watch it and people could say, "Oh, you're reaching." We mm-hmm. get that, but at this stage, there's too many coincidences with a lot of the details we catch. Yeah, for it to just be some some sheer. You know, your imagination running away with you. Mm -mm. And finally, in the end credits, for the first time, we see that it's not preceded by the dreaded please stand by (laughs) message. Yes. It just goes right into the the credits. And we do, um, we get another mid credit scene, which is when we see um, Grey Vision. Yeah. And it's, I'm saying it's not preceded by the please stand by because we are, this is the first episode also where we never go back into the aspect ratio of one division. It is always straight up in the MCU reality vision. Yeah. And so we're this episode is not an episode of WandaVision that ends with please stand by like the other episodes did. This yeah. episode ends with, you know, reality. Yeah. And that is everything. This was a chocked full of reality episode Next week of, be worse. of WandaVision as well as our review of this episode. Mm-hmm. We Really, really enjoy all of the analysis and theories and conversation and discussion that we have with you, with each other, and and really with the world, because we're all talking about this online on social media, which means you should also be in on this. Make sure you're following us on socials. That's at For All Nerds. You can also follow at Views from 616. That is our MCU-focused podcast where we are reviewing, obviously, WandaVision, but we're going to continue and review The Falcon and War Machine we're going to um did I say the Falcon and War Machine? You did the Falcon. <laughs> my, <laughs> the, sorry. Yeah, that might the be Falcon, next. That that might be next, right? No. Uh well, we gotta put all the black people together. Uh, <laughs> uh the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, excuse me. We're gonna be reviewing that as well as the MCU movies that are gonna be coming out. 
Oh, what, what venom means a mess. That's um, your fault. I had not even said, that's all you. <laughs> <laughs> like you started the joke, you ended the joke. I had nothing to do with that. I don't know. That. But but <laughs> don't put that hex on me, Ricky Bobby. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, we're, we're we're talking about this all the time. We got the memes, we got the jokes, and we got the thoughts in hand. So make sure you're following us on socials. Make sure you're following us on all of our social media mm-hmm. as well as all of on all our platforms. You can follow us on Spotify, SoundCloud, Apple Play, Google Play Music, iHeartRadio. If you want to follow us four times on each platform, do that. We appreciate it. Make sure you're also leaving reviews, letting us know how much you love us. And if you love what you hear, you want to continue continue hearing us and also give us the, the, the I wanted to say, give us the hex magic, the chaos magic that we mm. need to continue growing this. We need you to do a couple of things. You can hit us up on our Patreon page. That's patreon.com slash for all nerds, where you can become a financial member of the fan fam. And what that means is you get special gifts and access, depending on what level of the Patreon you are on. Uh, but other, but regardless, you're still a fan fam. Uh, you get a lot of perks from that. And also, if you were watching on Twitch, which you should absolutely be, you notice I'm wearing one of our merch. Fuego! Uh, this way. You yes. see it is our little Vision Vert and Wanda with the box braids. She, her box braids actually look like my box braids, which is hilarious. But <laughs> shout out to Mr. Morris55 for this design. But this it's is It's amazing. On our T Public page, as well as um, another amazing, I'm gonna grab it, another amazing design that just came mm. out. Shouts to Sketch Sawyer. Yes, sir. This is his name? Sketch this, Sawyer. This is, and for, this is exclusive. You can only get this from the Pull it back a little bit. Patreon. Can you see this? Uh, kind of, kind of. Kind of, we're not oh, no, really look, getting light, it. The light, the light is. It's like, had, wait, wait, you almost had it. You almost had it. Okay, the light's a little fucked up. But hold there on. we go, there we go, there, there, we go, there, there it is, go. there it is. Now you got it, yes. <laughs> So Storm. This is Storm on a motorbike. Um, Sketch Sawyer has some incredible designs that we've we've featured before, but this particular one with Storms is exclusive to For mm-hmm. All Nerds uh, T Public page. You can only get it there, and I have it on a black crew neck. You can get it in damn near any color, or any type of type of shirt or crew neck or tank top. And if you want it on like an nope, object. Books. Like books, like that's our old Nawi design. You can get it on books. You can get it on phone covers. You can get it in a mug. Like, look, look at all the books. Pillows. Pillows. Like you, you Ooh, that it. storm pillow might be fire. That storm I got pillow is going to be dope. I, I might want need that. I want it now. Yeah. So if you want yeah. this, if you want, if you want, you want a piece of this little Vision Vert tea or you want this storm sketch or you want any of our amazing designs that are still on our page, including the Foral Nerds logo. Go to tpublic.com slash stores with an S slash mm-hmm. for all nerds. Word. And make sure you're following us. I am one of your hosts, Tatiana King. That's at Tatiana King. Mm-hmm. And I am your other host at DJ Ben I mean. That's at DJ Ben I mean. Make sure you're following us on twitch.tv slash for all nerds. That's twitch.tv slash for all nerds, where you can see these beautiful visuals. Every Monday at 1 p.m. on the dot Eastern time, it is now becoming the place to be on Twitch at Monday Mm -hmm. at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Every Monday, we're going to get this MCU information to you. Right now, it's WandaVision. Then it should be uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier. We're going to do Black Widow. We're going to do everything. You know, Views from the 616 is on Fall Nerds every Monday. Fall Nerds live show every Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So 1 p.m., we on there Mondays and Thursdays. We're going to work out some other stuff where we on there, doing some more things. But, you know, mm-hmm. for now, make sure you catch us Monday, 1 p.m. Follow twitch.tv slash for all nerds. Thank y'all. Let me say this. Just thank y'all so much for all of the support. Yes. I mean, for all nerds support is always crazy. But I feel like whenever we start one of these new shows like Castle Black or Safe Negro Pod and our views from the 616, we get more and more listeners and more and more followers Mm -hmm. and people who just see what a thorough job we do dissecting these various shows, all these genres, all this different stuff. And just thank y'all for recognizing that. And big salutes to George M. Johnson. Mm -hmm. Uh, Also, Howard alum. He is a writer. Hate you. That you know that Big Dust Up on Twitter. Thank you so much. And thanks to everyone, all the new listeners and subscribers. Mm -hmm. We appreciate you. And we are freaking excited to go into the finale of WandaVision. This is going to be wild. And also, remember, happy birthday, DJ Ben Ami. Woo!